God damn it. Dude, I told you not to test the sub sound. Oh god. Oh god, hit me with the race sub sound and the scatter at the same time. Well, welcome everybody to the cursed Tuesday stream. <laughs> it's gonna be a week for sure. It is gonna be a week of all time. Um Yeah. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wanted happy meal reprint. Okay. <laughs> anyway, Slayer, thank you for the six. Sunset Barilla, thank you for the five. Tommaso, thank you for the prime. Appreciate you. Frank, thank you for the 17. Yannick, thank you for the nine. Cube is a weave. Thank you for the two. <laughs> Dude. Okay. ZB, I appreciate you. But I'm 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 telling you right now. I'm telling you right now, chat. The Ray cosplay is not happening. <laughs> that is not something that's gonna happen. Guys, that is not that is not up for debate. You're getting the you're getting the you're getting the sub sound, take it or leave it. <laughs> Don't say how much. There is no number. There is no number. The number does not exist. <laughs> oh man. Did you guys keep the subs for this moment? How long did you like not sub just to wait until the sub sound returns? God damn. <laughs> Dude. Uh, yes, that's crazy. God damn it. So what you're saying is... <laughs> What you're saying is, if I just keep the race sub sound, I get infinite subs? Is that how it works? I don't believe you. I don't think it's an infinite money glitch. I don't think it works like that. I don't think it works like that. Scrooge, thank you for the 12 months. Also, Chris, thank you for the gift sub. Droll lol, thank you for the 13. Rim gear, thank you for the 14. Georges, thank you for the 10. Slate Death Troke, thank you for the Prime. Good Koenig, thank you for the Prime as well. Appreciate you guys. Okay. Surely we're done now. That's a lot of subs. Appreciate you guys. Surely we're done. And we can get going with the... We can get going with the stream is what I meant to say. Dark Soul, thank you for the eight months. Um, let us begin because today is going to be an interesting stream. Let me tell you what we guys are going to do um, after the warm up. Because we got some fun plans for today. I feel like this is a Pepe D time. You know what? Because the remix is still so expensive and because you asked so nicely, you shall receive. You know, I'm, 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 I'm not the kind of person to deny a kind request. Oh, let's go. There you go. And we just, uh, we just guess some cards, huh? Let us begin. Ooh, that's, a uh, Arctic, think of the tier one. These be eagles. No. Guldos? Ah. I'm giving up on the stupid bird, dude. Falcos. Oh, yeah, it's all. It's a Neos. Oh, it's just Neos. <laughs> I, I, I was like, which Neos is that? Uh, where is he? Uh, ooh, this is the Red-Eye Stone. The stone... Uh, 
Is it Stone of? Yeah, Black Stone of Legend. That one. Oh, God. This is new, relatively, but I don't know which one it is. Ancient Warrior Saga. How do you organize your cards? I don't, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> not, not well. Oh, this is the robot claw robot. No claw claw reacher. Yeah. Uh, it's, I think this is digreffer on another card, but I don't know which that's what that's called. Chaos Greffer. Uh, friend, this is you, your friendship, right? Yeah. Uh, this is one of the slimes. It's like, it's not guardian slime. It's, um, humanoid slime. Yes. Humanoid. Ooh. This feels familiar. Actually, I take it back. No idea what that is. Trihead Dust Dragon. Okay. Mm, I'm getting Branded or Infernoid vibes. One of the two. Uh, void Trap Bowl. Yeah. Uh, seven complete. Seven complete. Yep. Ooh, it's not she and Squire. It is a six samurai though, because that is the yeah okay. Seal of Oricalcos, easy one. And who do we got here? Mermail Abysnos? No. It's a mermail, though. Mander? Oh, it's Mander. You're right. It's Mander. It's Mander. It's Mander. Tested the sub sound. It's indeed working. That is... um. Not, I mean, you're not wrong. Oh, that's um the pendulum thing. Uh, Endymion Mag Mag Magister? No, Servant. Servant of Endymion. This... Oh, wait. Oh! Theseus. Dude, I never looked at it this close. I thought I saw. It, I, I guess it's dumb, but I thought the 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 ship was the monster. I that it doesn't make sense, but I never looked at it. Which is funny because it was meant to be the best card of 2017. So you would think you would have to look at it a couple times, but uh, it's not Judgment Dragon. It's the the Synchro, which is something like it, it's got some. It, it's got Judgment in its name. This one. Yeah, Dragon of Heaven. Uh, this is Burst Return or Rebirth? Burst Return? Yeah. This looks very familiar. That's Decree. No! Oh, is it Bombardment? But it's the same, it's the same building though, isn't it? Uh, 
uh, this is like spell stone. No, something, something. Uh, I know this guy. He's got like the orb in his hand. The with the alchemist. Black spells. Yeah. Trick star? No. Oh, this is like fallen. Angel, this one. No? Okay. Then I don't know. I thought it was that for sure. Queen Angel of Roses. Okay. Close. Who is this? Oh, Dragon Souls. Return of Dragon... No, Return of Dragon Lords. Not Dragon Souls. Okay, we got a lot of fire. Who is this? Uh, is this a Shira Nui? Or is it Crimson Armor Ninja? Dragon Lord Chan... Achacha? What the hell is Achacha? What the hell is that? Okay, never mind me. Uh... Mass Chameleon? No. Oh! Uh, Cherub Sprout. Yeah. Oh, this is Evil Eye. I don't know those very well. I'm pretty sure it's Evil Eye Spell Trap, but yeah, Evil Eye Defeat. You look very familiar. You're the big Koki Mairu. Koki Mairu. Um, Maximus. Yeah, Maximus. Gravekeeper. Gravekeeper. Which one is that? Oh. Vassal. Uh, is, isn't this thing on, isn't this on Labyrinth? Is this set up or fair welcome? Fair welcome. Resonator. Oh, I'm not sure which one that is, though. Oh, Clock Resonator. Maybe? Yeah. Okay... Uh, I have no clue what that is. Void. Oh, void imagination. Actually, could have gotten that. Uh, that's exchange. Mm -hmm. uh, woodland archer. No. Wait. Really? Which one is Woodland Archer then? Which one am I thinking of? And which one is this? Arcane Archer of the Forest. Okay. Which one is Woodland Archer? Uh, this is a uh, Rafflesia. No. Huh? Dude, I'm mixing up. I'm mixing up cards so much today. What is going on? What is this? Jowls of Dark Demise. Damn. Okay. Uh, hero. Hero. Metal? Might be metal. Yeah, I thought it was signal first, but it, it, it signal is the is the thing that goes into the sky, right? Though this is something peacock, not 
It's not a, it's not a these. Ghost bird. Oh, this one. Okay. I thought it was called like Peacock of the Blue Flame or something like that. I don't know what's I don't know what's wrong today. This is a TG spell, I think. Yeah, this is like TG whatever, man. That's Gatling Ghoul, I hope. Yep. All right, we still got three minutes. It's not over until it's over. Let's see. Who is this? Evil Blast? Never heard of that card before. This, like, maybe a super heavy that I haven't seen before? No, it's not a super heavy. Yeah, Heroic Challenger. This feels familiar. This feels familiar. What is that? White layer? It's not white layer. Ah, oh, it's the corresponding thingy. Ah. Oh. Oh, this one I've seen before. Is that Prideful Roar? Yeah. The second half is not kind to me. That's Dark Sea. Dark Sea. Rescue or Float? Nice. Okay, 50-50-1. We needed that. I... Have never seen that before, I don't think. Silent Sea Nettle. Uh, this is something probability. Yeah, this one. That is an armed dragon. However, I think it's a spell card. That I don't know exactly. Is it? It might be leveled down. Is it leveled down? It is leveled down. Okay. Good. That is... Regi... No, Mega Monarch? Yeah. Uh, it's the... Power of Babel, not orchestrated Babel, the other Babel. Never seen before. Esparoba. Uh, which one is that? Snowdrop? No. Teardrop. Teardrop. Okay. Uh, okay, okay. Get him out of your system. Get him out of your system. Today was washed. Today was washed. Under 700, dude. Under 700. That was bad. That was bad. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Get him out of your system. Get him out of your system. Ah, uh, yeah. Make up for it with this one. Surely. Ooh, 1500 attack. Old, though. Rika Princess with the gifts of... <laughs> Appreciate you. <laughs> we are looking at an old card, chat. An old card... That is lower than level 4, and it's got 1500 attack, it's not a dark monster. I'm trying to think of like a level 3, because level 2s usually don't have that much attack. What's a level 3 with 1500 attack from back in the day? Uh, Abyss Lind. 
hold up the stats are okay it's a water level three it's a water level three 1500 attack 1200 defense even older than abyss lind not an aqua this has to be possible Water Enchantress? Yeah, Water Enchantress is my favorite uh, card from before 2012. I remember uh, using Water Enchantress to search right of Ramesir in GOAT format. That was the shit. That was pretty good. Undyne is not a level 3. Undyne is level 3, but Undyne is 1200. So. Um... <clears throat> Dude, old water monsters? Mermaid? Search for mermaid. That was actually not a bad idea. There was a couple ones, but none of them fit. That was not a bad idea, though. What if I look for serpent? We're going at it a little unconventional today, but no, I okay. can't. Fish. <laughs> Give me some level three fishes. Nope. Six samurai water guy. Oh, it's not a warrior though, but that was a good idea. It's uh, it's called six samurai. Uh, Shinai. Yeah. But it's not a warrior. It's not a warrior because we, we started with Rongo. Dude, what is that? Elemental Hero Ocean is a level four. It's not a level three. Uh Marshall Leaf? Marshall Leaf is not 2011. Marshall Leaf. It, the stats match though, but it's 2014, so. Atlantean are all 20... Atlantean is all 2012, except for this random vanilla. Like, there's no early. <sighs> Keeper of the Ocean? That does not exist. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. I can't say I knew the stats, though. I cannot say that I would have gotten this one. Um, unless we would have tried to just search for ocean. I should have... <laughs> I should have... I should have looked for Elemental Hero Ocean. Imagine. Imagine I just type ocean and find this. Instead of Elemental Hero Ocean. God damn it. Well... Well, well, well. Anyways, easy three tries. <laughs> Even though I didn't know what the hell this card was. All right. Welcome to the Tuesday stream. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have that many streams this week, as I already told you guys on Sunday. Because I am, uh, I am going to be hosting slash commentating the... Master Duel Invitational on the weekend. Uh, I don't have as many available days this week. So we're going to have a stream today. We're going to have a stream tomorrow. Then I have to leave for the Invitational. I'll be back regular schedule next week. Um, but we're going to be a little bit lower on content this week. But I mean, we got we got six out of seven days last week. So I think, I think you guys are going to be fine. Um, let me tell you what we are going to do uh, today and tomorrow. Um, first of all, as a lot of you have probably already seen, tomorrow we're doing uh, some gameplay again. We're going to be uh, doing some remote duels, me against uh, my my subs. Uh, the submissions for that are technically still open. We already have, I think we would already have enough to fill the entire stream, probably more than that. Uh, in case anyone still wants to, the submissions or like the, the uh, basically applications for if you want to be on the remote duel stream, they are technically still open on the Discord server, so if you have a functioning remote duel setup and you are a sub, you can just join the Discord and we uh, we duel tomorrow. Um, I'll announce the people that um, I'll, I'll announce the people later today on who's going to be part of the stream. 
And uh, so that's for tomorrow. That's for tomorrow. Today we don't have the remote dual setup. But we have, regardless, some interesting things for everybody. We're going to be looking at some TCG results from the weekend, you know, some deck profiles, some format, top cut, breakdowns, all that kind of stuff, because obviously we had a lot of regionals going on from Phantom Nightmare format. We had a 3v3 YCS in Costa Rica, and we, have a, we had the ultimate uh, UDS champion, whatever. Um... So we're going to be taking some time to look at some results, you know, analyze some deck lists, look at some sleeper decks too. I saw that in, for example, one singular regional, two Raid Raptors made top eight. So we might be taking a little bit more of a look at that uh, today as well um, to figure out whether that deck is real or not. You know, we, we, won't, we won't go in too much detail. You know, we're not going to spend like two hours on it, but like I want to... Look at the list, understand it, understand what it, what they're trying to do, see what's going on there, you know, maybe work out some choke points or something like that. We'll see. Um, yeah, so that's what we're going to do in terms of the TCG portion. Then we have, speaking of, speaking of the team YCS in Costa Rica, um, that was obviously won by, uh, by Pac and his teammates Kamal and Ruben. And we're going to have Pac on today on another episode of heart of the cast the podcast i'm doing together with farfa today it's not it's not going to be a two-man show today we got pack on it as well we've invited pack after taking down the uh after taking down the 3v3 ycs um back to back by the way they've won the previous 3v3 ycs in the us as well um we're gonna have pack on to talk about a little bit uh you know like the 3v3 YCS, the results, first uh, big weekend of Phantom Nightmare Fire format, all that kind of stuff, right? So we're going to have Pack on in a bit, and that is going to be fun, obviously. And also, a um, little bit of a spoiler, we are also going to have Jesse at some point. Uh, we had Jesse set up to be on this week, but then, you know, we couldn't quite make it work because Jesse is currently traveling. Um, because there's another YCS at the upcoming weekend, and Jesse's already in, like, uh, I think, in the area and not home. So we're going to have a podcast episode with Jesse, probably at some point next week. I'm not entirely sure. We haven't settled on a date yet. Like I said, was supposed to be today or tomorrow, but then Jesse uh, said, like, it's not going to work out because there's too much to do, uh, and he's not home. So, um, but still, I mean, we got Pack. We got packed today, and then we're probably gonna get Jesse for next week. So it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be quite a couple good episodes, I think, for the Heart of the Cast. Uh, once again, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't heard of the Heart of the Cast yet, you can just go exclamation mark podcast, and I think there's a command with all the relevant links, um, available. Uh, unless it doesn't work, but I'm pretty sure it does work. Someone is gonna test it probably. Oh, uh, has can someone? Quickly do an exclamation mark podcast for me so I can see if it works or not, whether I'm chatting or not. I think it's enabled. There it is. Ah, I haven't added the Apple. Um, I have not added the Apple link to the to the thing yet, but it is technically also available on Apple. But I, I, yeah, I, I should update the command at some point. All right. Anyways, um, and once that's done, once that is done. We've got two options. We either we either take more of a look at regional results or like it depends because the podcast is in ex pretty much exactly one hour, right? The podcast starts in one hour and we have to we have to do it in one hour because Pack um Pack is doing it before work. <laughs> uh Pack is getting up early for us, which is I mean obviously shout outs to Pack for making it happen. Uh if he does make it happen, if he manages to wake up. <laughs> uh, but the plan is Pac uh, wakes up early for us and uh, we film the podcast or we, we record the podcast before Pac needs to get to work um, because that's the only timing we could make work in this week. So um, the podcast is in one hour. Depending on, I mean, I don't want to, I'm, I'm yapping right now if you, if you haven't noticed, but like we'll, we'll, we'll get going soon. Um, we'll start looking at some regional results, look at some deck lists, look at some breakdowns. Depending on how long that takes us, we might continue doing it after the podcast, but we could also move on to, to get some gameplay into the stream and play some Master Duel. That's the two options after the podcast is done. 
Uh, I'm leaning towards some master duel because I always like, you know, playing at least a little bit on every stream. Um, but we'll see if if it's like if we just have so much more to look at from the regionals, um, then we might do that. But I really I am a fan of at least playing a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh on my daily Yu-Gi-Oh streams. You know what I'm saying? All right. Um, that being said. Let us hop right in. What deck are you going to be playing tomorrow? Um, I haven't built it yet, actually. I haven't built it yet. Uh, my, 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 my desk is kind of a mess at the moment. Or, like, not my desk per se, but, like, my cards are kind of all over the place. Uh, I think I want to... I think I want to play some Runic Snake Eyes. Because I, I, I thought it looked fun last week. And I may also update my Labyrinth version with the Black Goat Laughs just to try it. Because I'm going to be honest with you, Labyrinth, spoilers, Labyrinth is nowhere to be seen at the moment. Like, nowhere to be seen. And I want to I wanna find out why, you know? Like, I want to at least give it a shot and see if it's maybe just because people are underestimating it. You know, is the Fire King Snake Eye matchup really as terrible as people make it sound? Uh, I, I want to, I want to check it out. I want to, I want to check it out anyways. So those are the two decks I want to, I want to probably try tomorrow, you know, play a couple games with Runic Snake Eye just to see how it feels and play a couple games with Labyrinth to understand maybe why it's not as popular, uh, anymore, right? <laughs> Naraxis, thank you for the 14 months. Appreciate you. Also, Sneaky Steve, thank you for the nine months. Rematch soon. Uh, technically, uh, there's nothing, there, you know, I, I have no problem with having people on the stream multiple times. Of course, I want to make sure to give a chance uh, to people that haven't been on stream before, maybe, if we have enough submissions on the on the Discord. Obviously, I'm, I think I'm going to prefer people that have not been on yet. At the same time, I want to make sure that, like, uh, if depending on how many submissions we have, I want to make sure that we get mostly good remote dual setups and good um decks in there right like because people do post the deck that they would be playing and uh some people have been posting some very rogue strategies which i'm i'm gonna pick every every once in a while so you know if you want to be on with a rogue strategy feel free to try um just understand that i mean i want to pick mostly relevant decks right meta relevant decks right so um, probably gonna have a rogue pick uh, in there every once in a while, also for the surprise factor, so that I don't know what's 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 happening because I don't um, remember which person brought which deck, right? But like someone, for example, someone submitted Chainburn uh, for the remote dual stream, and I just I I I don't think it would be the greatest content. So yeah. <laughs> Okay, that being said, remote dual stream is tomorrow. Remote dual stream is tomorrow. So today, let's focus on something else. We have a whole bunch of results from the past week. And once again, shout out to the Super Paludo spreadsheet. Uh, it is currently also linked in the channel command exclamation mark spreadsheet if you want access to this information as well and look at it yourself because obviously we're not going to have the time to look at every single deck list. So if there is a specific thing you're interested in, you can go ahead and check it out. Another interesting thing worth noting as well about this thing is that it's got like um on the on the left side over here, it's uh, on the right side over here. It's got like uh non-engine cards slash staple cards also listed in terms of how many people main decked them, how many people side decked them in the deck profile. So they actually they, it's a it's a it's a huge effort this entire thing it's not just go through the uh the deck profile like uh, collect the deck profiles they also go through the decks and collect the uh the individual cards from it which is i mean tremendous effort honestly um so pretty pretty cool first things first before we go into individual deck lists you know what do we have here we have a team ycs from Latin America, just to put it into context. This is a Team YCS Latin America, Costa Rica. This was a um, an event that had about, I want to say, 130 teams, I think, which would equal about 
400 players, roughly. Uh, so like a 400 player YCS. Not the largest out there, but still, I mean, uh, there was a lot of good players there and 400 is still not a small event by any means. And the top 16 me the top 16 in a 3v3 means that this is 48 deck lists, right? We have 48 deck lists here from the 3v3 and um they have it's a separate pie chart just for the 3v3 as well down here from the 3v3 uh team ycs in costa rica we had 23 fire king decks out of the top 48 deck lists right um which is almost exactly 50 percent it is one short of 50 percent fire king snake eyes um on top of that we have 16 pure snake eye deck lists so currently um <laughs> uh currently we have kind of this we have two debates going on rather two debates that i want to look at today uh the debate number one uh, is snake eyes tier zero debate number two is pure snake eye or fire king snake eye better right so for the first question there's an overarching like data thingy over here um that just breaks down all of the top cuts this weekend or this past weekend and it's it, it splits them into using snake eyes not using snake eyes so this would theoretically also include something like rescue ace using a snake eyes engine or something like that um and out of all the topping decks of, across all the tournaments we have a 61.5 percent um snake eyes usage rate or topping rate right um which is incredible that is a very very powerful because it's not just narrowed down to like one event or two events this is all the events so i think this is an incredible number um i don't even know what the what's the definition of a tier zero deck hold up is there i mean there is not a definition right tier zero deck definition Uh, okay, this is like a Pojo thread from 12 years ago. Yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think there's a set consensus on it. It used to be 65% on Pojo. 65%, okay. So, so from that angle, I guess you would, uh, you would argue at the moment it's not that. Okay, well... For the team YCS in Costa Rica, it's it's definitely more than that. One thing I would like to throw into the discussion here is that you are way more likely to encounter more snake eyes the higher the level of the tournament, right? Because the, the higher the level of the tournament, the more seriously people take it, right? Like, for example, if you look at the representation, I don't think they have a graph for it here. But, for example, this also includes the undisputed uds championship right which was only 16 players but it was some of the highest caliber players in in the world right or in the tcg rather um and for that tournament it was 13 snake eye decks out of 16 16 players 13 snake eye decks one branded one flu one cash tira essentially right so depending on which tournament you look at like a lower level tournament you're going to go to a locals you're probably not going to see 70 percent snake eyes but at a super high level event you're going to see more right and then um for team ycs costa rica we also see a significantly larger snake eyes um portion right um so I think it's hard to say. For me personally, uh, I think it is going to... Like, the thing is, I'm in my head, there's two things going on. On the one hand, I'm looking at it like Snake Eyes is an incredibly powerful deck that um, is definitely the best deck of the format, right? There is no other deck in contention, in my opinion, for being the best deck in the format. However... If there's only one best deck in the format, does that automatically make it tier zero? I don't think that's the case. Um, because if I'm comparing Snake Eyes to something like Tier Limits, it's like 
both were the best decks in their respective formats. But the um the tier limit deck was like way more like dominant, right? Um I don't know. I think calling it tier zero is reasonable. I think calling it the only deck in tier one, like the best deck by far, tier one deck, you know, like is also reasonable. I don't know. The the exact what what exact label you put on it doesn't really matter. It's definitely the best deck, right? So let's not get uh, uh, like caught up on it by too much. In terms of the difference between Fire King Snake Eye and Snake Eye, um, I think the difference is actually smaller than people think it is in terms of power level at the moment. Um, I think Fire King Snake Eye is putting up numbers. But I also think that's because the deck is way more popular. Um, like, for example, we were going to have Pack on the, the podcast later. Uh, the 3v3 Costa Rican YCS was won by Pure Snake Eyes in a triple. Like, they all uh, together decided Pure Snake Eyes is better than Fire King Snake Eyes, and they pulled through. Um, and there's a couple teams here that made that decision for with good players too. You see uh, John Wilkin, Hans Guerrero, Simon He, triple pure snake eye. You see um, Christian Urena, Luca Forian, Walter Jewell, triple pure snake eye, right? So there's definitely uh, people here that agree, good players that agree, hey, pure snake eye is actually the way to go. And I think there are some real benefits to playing the pure Snake Eye deck, like uh, uh, being able to run less bricky cards in your deck, play for maximum consistency, maximum non-engine, that kind of stuff. So um, interesting for sure. Interesting for sure. I unfortunately think, even though we're going to have Pac on later, Pac already said that you know there's another YCS coming up for the next weekend. And he does not want to share every single thing about, you know, his tournament preparation. But I'm sure we're going to get some stuff out of him. But uh, he wants to keep some stuff uh, a secret already, is what he told me. Um, but, yeah. It's, I, 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 think, um, I think Pure Snake Eyes has, has a real shot of being uh, the better version in the long run. Because... The beginning of a format is always funny because everyone plays, everyone starts with very, or like most people, not everyone, most people start with relatively standard builds with what everyone is expecting, what everyone perceives to be the standard in the beginning because we don't have the data and the experience to back it up yet. All we have is information from the OCG where they're playing mostly Fire King. So most people start playing Fire King with similar ratios than people in the OCG um, and we're going to see where that takes us in the upcoming weeks we're going to see how that develops because you know um, Snake Eye, pure Snake Eyes is already at a much higher representation than in the OCG at the moment and uh, we, we'll see where we go from here alright um, that being said I don't want to spend too much time on looking at Fire King Snake Eye lists or Snake Eye lists uh, there was one in particular that I was told was interesting because it runs board breakers, no hand traps. So I wanted to look at Elise Davis's um, pure snake eye deck from Fargo Regionals uh, and, and just see how an approach... Because this is interesting to me because it's the first iteration, iteration of not playing the standard list, quote-unquote, right? And so I want to take a look at that. I want to take a look at that first things first. All right. Let me go full screen. Oh my God. Hey everyone. My name's Elise. Welcome back. Okay, to why did we do that? Today. I got third place at the Fargo Regional playing uh, a fire deck. Weird. But I uh, played Pure Snake Eye and I decided not to play any hand traps because I wanted to try the. Uh, like the quick plays and stuff. Um, we'll get more into it in a minute, but I don't know, hand traps just seem fine. I just want to try the different approaches that I've seen some people do. And uh, I just like to hear more of the Fire King because I just hate the Fire King cards. I think they're just so subpar and like, I don't know. I feel like this deck grinds really well and like if you, but I have to be too smart with it in order to play it, which kind of sucks, but 
uh, yeah. <laughs> but first, before we get into the Decker Pile shoutouts, uh, shout out to my sponsor, Affinium Accessories. Use code Affinium5 for 5% off your entire purchase. They make some of the cheapest cloth mats on the market at some of the best prices, and they're going through a lot of uh, redesigns right now, and it'll be really cool with some of the stuff they're coming out with, so make sure you check it out. So it's just econ and droplets? See, that's what I want to see, because, um, the, like, look, before we even get into this, before we even get into why you would play this deck or like into the list, let's talk about why you would do something like this, right? Because um, everyone seems to be on hand traps at the moment. And um, also judging from some of the gameplay at the, that we observed at the UDS, right? Um, the standard way that players are currently going about playing or approaching the fire format is just they throw a lot of hand traps into their decks whether it was the fire king decks or the pure snake eye decks for example at the uds i'm just referring to the uds a lot right now because it was very good players and it was streamed so we have footage of it um the approach seemed to be hey the snake eye deck even though it is okay into hand traps, it definitely has its choke points, right? Like you Valor, you Imperm, a Snake Eye Ash, and uh, potentially they might just pass if they don't have the right extender. And if you draw, if you draw two hand traps, then you know it actually becomes quite dangerous for them. Uh, they might just have to pass back. And so a lot of um, a lot of games, ironically. Uh, when the, the 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 snake eye deck and this is one of my issues with it the snake eye deck is quite interactive but when the game turns into a hey i'm hand trapping you twice so you have to pass and then you try to hand trap me to make me pass back those kind of games can feel incredibly like gambly right in a sense like even though the game uh, the deck the deck in its core principle provides interactive gameplay uh, if the if half of the decks are hand traps, it doesn't matter how interactive your engine is when no ni neither of the player really gets to like get the engine rolling. Like we see, we see a bunch of games in the UDS. Like, yeah, I'll just Valor your Snake Eye Ash, and you're just gonna pass, right? Uh, or like I'm gonna Valor that, Imperm that, Delta that. Uh, and then hope I can resolve my normal summon next turn. Those kind of things, right? And sometimes, sometimes that can be the best way to approach a format because, like, if it's your only choice, well, I guess you have to go with it. But I think Snake Eye or Fire decks, as a, in general, are like their end boards are very powerful. Their grind game is really strong, but I don't think they are so oppressive that you have to stop them um in, in by at all cost it's not like a uh monadium situation where if they ever resolve that board you have no chance of winning there is uh freaking there is uh ways to to go around it show the deck goddamn if you look if you just want to watch a deck profile with no input you can go exclamation mark spreadsheet and get the hell out of my stream if you want to be annoying about it if you don't like to talk about the game and just watch a deck profile, the link is right there. You don't have to be annoying right now. Mount, uh, link will be in the description. Um, shout out to all the homies back home. Uh, shout, out to, shout out to Joey for getting first place. Uh, <laughs> um, and shout out to all the Minnesota homies, Alan for recording and always being good and helpful, Lang, Mark, Ryan, uh, uh, a lot of this depends on if the player card, going first is on jet. I mean, jet is harder to, the jet boards with no hand traps are harder to break. They're not impossible to break though. I mean, it's just like, it's going to be like uh barren, barren savage, but yeah. Yeah, let's just get into it. I don't know. Oh, shout out to Jibriel because and Jib and Lunds because they always help me a lot, um, and I appreciate them. But anyways, three DML weird. I think with pure you have to play three because you just need to max out on I what your real that. engine is. Two Ash, uh, two pop or three Ash, two Poplar. I'm tired. Uh, one Oak, one Birch, and basically another Snake Eye, the Jet, and then uh, Flame Bird. Baron Savage plus Apple is easy to break. I didn't say it was easy to break. But if you don't spend a single hand trap, you still have six cards, you know, like it's 
And and if you are on power spells, like you have to bait Baron and Savage and then like take the apple with talons or something like that. It's not impossible. Birch, um, play two of it because I'm playing pure. I almost want to cut this. I don't like Birch. Two has just been so good. I, I gen um, genuinely, I see Birch a lot in the OCG. And when after having played the deck for uh, like a little bit now, I have, I don't think I have searched it more than like once. And I, even then, most of the time I'm searching Birch, I could also be searching like Poplar instead to get the extender. I, I don't really know how I feel about Birch. Especially with like the field spell, a lot of the times I like comboing where I just put this in the smaller trap off of the field spell and then just like send it. Or what did I just, Birch like, ever, like, ever do to you? Well, well it, it, it's never done anything for me. That's why, you know, that's what I'm saying. Baron a lot. Baron is a really good <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh card and Jet just... Also, I think Jess is really good with- I like Birch to counter the redundancy between resolving Ash and having Bonfire already. So, I mean, yeah, but at, at the same time, aren't we already happy if we resolve Ash? Uh, and can't, uh, there's still a chance. I mean, I, I, I know what you're saying, right? But like, it depends on what, which version you're playing as well. Like we're playing the synchro version. We're resolving uh, Ash, so why can't we just pitch our bonfire for um, Jet Synchron or send it for Diabell Star, right? Uh, the bird when you draw it, so that's always nice. Um, for the last monsters, I played two Fender, so when I was working out space for my deck list, I only had two spots left, and it was either going to be Droll or Nib. But, I don't know, neither of them just felt inherently good on their own, and at least, like, Fender, like, puts a presence on the board and, like, adds to my end board if I'm going first, so it felt safe. Um Fenrir is alright. Fenrir is alright. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if she's playing Phantasme, because Phantasme seems perfect for a board, bre board breaker approach, because you just get more cards and more bodies. In that case, I would side out Fenrir, but... Um, it was okay. It honestly could have just been something else. Like, whatever. Um, that's it for the monster. I just don't think, I, I don't, I don't think Fenrir provides as much value as a dedicated power spell when you go second. Like, it's fine going first, obviously. Going second into a board that you do, you let them make boards, right? Because you don't play hand traps. Um, I don't know if Fenrir feels as powerful as another power spell. It depends what, which power spells we're already maining, of course. Engine, play three bonfire, three... Playing into towns with Phantasme when you're on breakers is a bit weird. Is it weird? I don't. I, I don't think statistically it's it's that bad. Like, cause there's a large chance if, that your opponent just sides out talents when you when they see you're on board breakers game one, and even then, like, I I don't think uh, I don't think it's that bad to have like one card in your opponent's deck that counters your card that otherwise is completely crazy. Wanted only one original because I don't think hard drawing this card is a, it's good, but I think you just have too many ways to get to it, and a lot of the time you're not like hurting for it. Because I'd rather see like this than anything else, the field spell, um, because that just facilitates pure more. And like this usually just goes for jet synchron if I can. Um, then for the last snake eye card, or something. like the way I'm looking at it, I'm thinking about it now. The way I'm looking at Phantasme versus Talents in that scenario is like, I think you're ahead in that sort of statistic if you compare the two sides. Because they put, like, let's say post side, they go first, they decide to keep Talents in, you side in Phantasme. It's like, their premise is they have a Talent in their deck, which is a completely dead card, unless you draw Phantasme specifically, right? Which implies they need to draw talents and you need to draw phantasme which is not that likely that both of those things happen together whereas on your end as the phantasme player it's like you have phantasme into in your deck which is a phenomenal card um unless your opponent draws specifically talents so like there's a couple outcomes right like if if neither of you draws like if they don't draw talents and you don't draw phantasme it doesn't matter if they draw talents and you don't draw Phantasme, it's good for you because they have a dead card. If they don't draw talents and you draw Phantasme, it's good for you because you resolve Phantasme and, and get, the, get the advantage from it. And the only bad scenario for you is if both players draw the card, right? They draw talents and you draw Phantasme and they need to combo as well, right? I mean, they could still brick alongside the, the talents. 
So it's like, I think in those four scenarios, like one is irrelevant because neither of you see the card. One is bad for you and two are good for you. I think it's, I think it's solid to have Phantasma in your deck. It's just right. one, one way to think about it. Like, because just the existence of a potential counter by your opponent doesn't mean you shouldn't be playing the card. Uh, the one subversion, uh, it just makes sense with playing pure and if I'm gonna go like with an all spell trap approach, I feel like converting this or converting this is a really good way to go about it. So, um, yeah, it was really good. It baits out a lot. I think you should play it if you have the room. And then for all my non-engine, three super poly, three econ, three droplet, three cosmic, three talents, and then one called by. Um, okay, this is cool. This is actually this list is cool this looks like it's a lot of fun to play i, I it's a shame that that she that, that she put the call by on top of all the like okay thank you uh, no okay um a couple things here a couple things here um my issue with the board breaker approach like in theory the board breaker approach, I think, is good um, because you are trying to break out of this situation where uh, you're just throwing hand traps back and forth at each other, right? And trying to stop your opponent from resolving the combo because there's obviously downsides to cards like Imperm, Valor, Nibiru, Ash. There is no, besides Dimension Shifter, there's no insanely powerful hand trap against the snake eye deck right most hand traps are gambles quote unquote most hand traps you're just hoping your opponent has to pass after um and your opponent just it's basically a comparison between who has more starters versus who has more hand traps right you're trying to break out of that situation the problem is that some board breakers are more efficient than others right like for example i think against the fire king deck cosmic cyclone is an incredible uh board breaker because of what kind of weakness the Fire King Island creates. Um, and even if even if it's not the Fire King Island that you're hitting with Cosmic, you can still hit whichever card they place into the Spell and Trap Zone with um, Flamberge, or w which one they want to summon with Flamberge, right? So you can always use Cosmic uh, like, like well, right? Um, the thing is, there are some board breakers that I think are way better than others. And I think Super Poly, I'm, I, I am not a fan of Super Poly in theory. Um, I, I, maybe I have to play with the card to give it some more credit, but I personally have not been a fan of Super Poly in, in theory because it's simply like this deck doesn't really have good discards for Super Poly. The only card that you could argue does something in the graveyard is like um, Poplar, but pop, discarding Poplar for Super Poly is not as good as it seems because like you're going to get the Poplar effect every time anyways like it's a once per turn thing that you will get at some point so if you discard it for super poly you get it immediately but then you don't get it later on so I, i'm not a huge fan of super poly um enemy controller i think is phenomenal in the sense that like if if people go for early appaloozas to play around nibiru's um then i i really like enemy controller because that's one of the best things you can steal with enemy controller um another huge thing about enemy is that you can take stuff while dodging very popular cards in the format like imperm and effect veiler that i think is very huge right um droplet i don't know if i like droplet so i think i think the one thing that might be holding back the the board breaker approach <laughs> Three block, thank you for the prime. One thing that might be holding back the, the board breaker approach is that I don't know if there are enough good quote unquote power spells that you can main deck. Because I think there are some that work after siding, especially well, right? Like something like Soul Release, I think is very good. Uh, as as a it's not really a, it's weird to call it a board breaker, but it's definitely a going second power spell, right? Um those kind of cards, I think, work against the fire decks. The problem is you can't really main deck those, right? Because they don't offer anything in other matchups and they don't go, they're not good going first. But, yeah. 
What about Striker Engine alongside Power Spells? I thought about that. I unironically did. I unironically thought about like a version that plays like Engage, Hornet Drones, Widow Anchor, Shark Cannon, maybe even for like going second as well as like Extenders going first. I don't hate the idea. I haven't tried it. I haven't tried it, but I I do think there is some merit to a more unconventional way of approaching board breakers. Because this is like the... It makes sense that this is the first board breaker version that pops up. Because these are the most cookie cutter board breakers in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, right? The first things you think of, of like quick play spell, mostly board breakers that are good going first and second. You're like, okay, enemy, droplet, super poly. And in this case, cosmic cyclone for this format in particular. Subversion plus Saints plus Fender. I have like 18 non engine, which is like the biggest uh, talking point about why I like this version more than Fire King is just you have so much room for, for like versatility and like a lot of non engine. Um, but these cards are just so good because they just like you're the striker engine would be much better if Engage was at three, though. The, the ratio is slightly off with just two. You're not gonna get the draw very often, and it's also much weaker into Droll and Lockbird, is another thing. Like if uh, if the if the format ever shifts away from Droll, which I think I, it's still... Droll is popular from what I've seen, um, but I think it's going to shift away from it a little bit once people realize, you know, the Snake Eye lines through Droll are actually still really good. Um, I think uh, I think if, if that sort of thing happens where it shifts away from Droll a little bit, then I could see myself using those cards a little bit more. Playing a deck that is essentially supposed to be a grind and trade deck, so these cards just facilitate like that so much better like so many force things from every single one of these cards um probably the mvps are, isn't like, anti-spell just the big problem Droplet? i mean anti-spell beats almost any deck like that's that's the, the problem is what like what's the argument right like you're like okay my opponent goes first with a fire deck and has an anti-spell i'm gonna lose to that what's your what's your solution that you're proposing there instead of playing board breakers like what do you want to have in that scenario like you're just gonna draw two hand traps and then you still get anti-spelt and you're probably gonna lose right like uh, it's not great as someone who tested board breakers extensively the end boards are too diverse right now for effective board breaker use especially since super poly isn't great uh i mean maybe i'm looking at it through the lens of trying to specifically counter the fire decks which um is hard to do with generic board breakers in that sense i agree with you because um like one way you could go about it i think is you could main deck board breakers like these right and just hope they get you there in game one against the fire decks and then side deck more specific board breakers for the mirror match or like for the fire decks right like you put cards like Soul release, Phantasme, or some stuff like that into your side deck, and then upgrade the quality of your board breakers after siding, I think. Which is the same thing people are doing with hand traps, by the way, most of the time, right? They'll main deck generic hand traps and then side deck specific ones. So it's kind of the same approach, but with power spells. It was actually surprisingly good. Like, Droplet Econ were mainly for just, like, dodging stuff and just trying to, like, maintain board advantage, which they, they performed really well. Um... I only played against like two fire decks, so like Cosmic wasn't insane, but it came up enough against some random things. But uh, that is the main deck, 40 cards, uh, thank god. Um, I mean, yeah, it's for just the extra deck. It's what um, you would expect. It's like the, the pure Snake Eye version, some minor differences because main decking Birch, but like for the most part, it's just like we've got hella non engine and we're just doing board breakers instead of hand traps, but yeah. The uh, Link Rebo, IP. Little Knight, two Charmers, Phoenix. I only have room for one Princess. Uh, Whale, Raging Phoenix, uh, Zelantis, and Apo. In pure, this card just seems harder and harder to make as time goes on, but I think you still need to play it. Um, but I really wish I could play a second Princess. But you think maining Cosmic Cyclone is worth? I think, I think it doesn't make sense, once again. I'm sorry to reiterate over some of these, but they, they keep coming up. Or like, it's, 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 I don't think we've talked about that specifically today. Um, I don't think Cosmic Cyclone makes a lot of sense when you play a standard quote-unquote version with like Ash, Imperm, Valor, Nib, or something like that, right? Like, because you have to think about what do I want my Cosmic Cyclone to do? 
uh, especially when I go second, right? And when you go second and you play Cosmic Cyclone, you're basically saying like, hey, I want my opponent to have a Fire King Island on the field. I want my opponent to resolve the Snake Eye cards in, in order to get through the Ponyx, to get through the island, and then I want a Cosmic to kill their board, right? That's what you're basically saying in that moment, right? You're like, I, that's what I want to happen. So if, you're, if your deck has 12 hand traps or something like that, it does not make sense to add a Cosmic Cyclone on top of it, right? If, if you want to play Cosmic and you, you want it to be good, then you need to build the deck accordingly and make it so your opponent plays into the Cosmic Cyclone. Because your opponent... It's the same thing is true in, like, the voiceless voice matchup, for example. Like, if you always hand trap the low, for example, you're never going to have a good target for Cosmic unless they hard draw the barrier. Um, or, like, the trap, right? So, like, it's it doesn't make sense to main deck Cosmic in a list that has, I think, 12, 15 hand traps. I think this is the sort of format where a lot of the board breakers don't have great synergy with the hand traps. Because the goal of the hand traps... There are formats where the goal of hand traps is to make your opponent's board weaker. Like, like half boards, right? And then there are formats where the purpose of hand traps is to stop your opponent from playing altogether, right? And this is, I think this is the latter. If you play hand traps, this format, you're stopping the opponent in, it, in their tracks, is what you're trying to do. Um, there just wasn't room for it, but I really wish I played the second. I need to find room for it. I'll figure it out. Okay, people are assembling um, for the podcast. Hold up. Links. Uh, for synchros, I only play the one jet. Let me and finish this real Baron. quick. This is three minutes. I decided to cut the savage because a lot of the time it just seemed really win more and it could just be devoted to like other plays. And there's no ways to like kill and grind that I just don't. If I wanted to fit Super Poly, I had to cut it, or I only play one Super Poly target, but both Super Poly targets came up, so... Uh, Savage just felt fine, I don't think I ever missed it. And then, uh... One Mud Dragon and the one Garura. I... Super Poly did both of these a lot, uh... And this card's insane. So, so you have to play them. If you're gonna play Super Poly. Then, for the side deck, the only hand traps in my deck, three Ash and three Bell, um... It's mainly just for Rogue, like, I don't even set this card in for the mirror anymore, just because with how my main deck's already situated and what else I have to put in. Um, so yeah, it's just best cards for Rogue. And then, uh, for Soul Release, um, again, since I'm not going, I like, like hand trap approach, um, even if people are playing anti-spell, I have, like, Cosmic, plus I also have Evenly, so this card should usually resolve, and it's just such a blowout that I think... I, should, I, I think I need to play it. Um, three anti spell. This just felt like the best blood or like going first card. I know like DDG and uh, like there's a lot of different cards that are randomly bigger now, like Judgment, Summon Limit. Um, this just feels the best because as the format goes on, people are going more to like spell cards, power cards, trade cards. So I feel like this just covers the most options and just feels relatively safe compared to the others. Um, and yeah, if I'm just winning the grind, I should just be winning. So I think that it helps with the grind better. And then last card, like I said, three evenly. Uh, I think this card overperformed. I think I put it in against almost every matchup. Um, people really can't play around evenly that well right now. Evenly's and interesting. If I can, then like I have the other cards in my deck to take care of it, and it also helps with uh anti spell. But uh yeah, that is it for the deck list. Um. Yeah, I've been really happy with Pier. I've been really glad to not play Fire King cards. But, uh, yeah, um, if I forgot any shoutouts, I'm sorry. But thank you all for watching. All right. Uh, I like this approach. I like this approach. I think it needs some more fine tuning. I don't know if, like, the format needs to develop a little bit. We need to see uh, which one, like, currently it seems like the premier version of or like the premier approach, the, the, the more popular approach seems to be just hand trap the opponent. But I do always like the, the thing that I like most about these and maybe sometimes it's because maybe it's biased. Maybe I'm biased because these sort of versions, they promote more interactive gameplay. Like it's more fun to see someone go second with, let's say, an enemy controller and a talents than a Valor and an Imperm. If you if you see where I'm coming from, because it's like if someone goes second with Valor and Imperm in this format, the question is just like, does the opponent have another extender to play through it? 
or not and if not then you know player two uh can just you know go go in and then for uh for uh, like if, if if it's enemy or enemy talents you know you know like oh that's good that this is going to be like a match right you're going to be you're going to be trading back and forth like going into some interactive gameplay so maybe i maybe it's more like i like the idea of the gameplay that this sort of list portrays if you know what i'm saying right um but yeah check the daniel hartman one compared to this one i think both the reasonings were very valuable uh i would however we do need to get going with the podcast so we might go back to this after the podcast is done we, we might spend some extra time later on it so keep keep that in mind but we do need to get the others onto the podcast right now hold up hold up okay mm -mm. hello hello okay. morning Good morning. Hold up. Let me make sure they can hear you guys. Now they can. A pegaphone. Yep, yep, yep. They can, they can, they can. All right. So, um, congratulations, Pac, first of all. Haven't said that on stream yet. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And Appreciate thank you for waking up uh, extra early for us. No problem. <laughs> Catch up. Anytime, baby. He's catching up. So now I just need to set your guys' uh, cameras our... up. Right. Uh, a, uh, what is this collab you're doing with Christian? Oh, basically I, on Sunday, I think we're going to drop like all the, leak, all the leaks for like the, the pure snake eye deck. So we're just going to like show off like all like the, the how we innovated all the combos um, because we made a lot of it better to like be ahead of like other players and then um and our deck list and like like all of like the work that went into it so normal that's all ash noted noted <laughs> yeah the lines literally the new armageddon knight except like way less bricks and <laughs> yeah it, okay. it literally does everything i like me a bit of armageddon knight <laughs> oh so I always thought that there was going to be a, a combo version of it. Well, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's a combo version. Maybe it's not. You don't have to say anything. Mm -hmm. but that sounds uh, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah, figured, yeah, yeah. Like, OCG never really caught on to anything like that since they have Max C. But hey, maybe uh, oh maybe yeah, you guys will find something neat. <laughs> right, Chad, you're not going to be on. Words. You're not going to be on screen to... today. It's going to be packed. You're tr you're trying to line up. Okay, there you go. Pack is way louder than Farfa. <laughs> Okay, that is usually the other way around. Hold up. Wow, that's you got me turned down, man. <laughs> well. No, chat. See you later, chat. Ha, 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 ha. It's me now. You have me, like, off to the side as well. Da, da, da. You mean your camera? Yeah, a little bit. Beep, beep, beep. You coming to the next event uh, in Europe, Pac? Oh, Which one? of course, of course. <laughs> why do you, why do you have to? Why do you have to mention that? Why do you the, have to bring that up? Open. I think it's gonna be a great event. <laughs> the UK <laughs> Open, uh, dude. Oh my you god. Know Wait, you guys joke, but I actually legitimately thought about coming to one of the opens, but I don't know. It just depends <laughs> on the schedule, I guess. He's on the grind. <laughs> Can you move Farfa like 500 pixels to the side? <laughs> what, you mean like off screen? That's funny. Yeah, in the opposite direction. Okay. Chat, look how cool my Dragon Ball Z mug is. Like when, it, when the temperature is like really high, it like brings up the whole design. And then when it's cold, it like slowly, see how at the top it's going black? It's like, this fades. Isn't that really oh. cool? Oh. Dude, that's, you know what? Really you know strange. what they don't tell you about those mugs before you get them? Go on. You can't put them in the freaking dishwasher. They break. Really? Yeah. I had oh, one of those so with like uh, Super Mario World where it would be like, it would be the nighttime thing if there's nothing in it. And if you pour hot water in it, it would be the blue background from like right. the, the overworld. And I put it into the dishwasher and now it's not, it doesn't work anymore. Like it, 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 it yeah. 
just doesn't work or like it just cracks? No, it, or... it like it's it, it comes off the, the, the coating or whatever. Well, okay. Man, that's some efficient German dishwasher you've got there, dude. Yeah, it gets it gets some <laughs> it gets some hella clean, dude. It's all gone. <laughs> hella clean. <laughs> all right. Uh let's begin. We've got about uh I'd say a solid hour fifteen at least. I gotta take ten time yeah. to get a vaccine today, so we got some time to spend. Um, yeah, I'll get to go. Ready? Okay. You want to go? Do you do you just want to use this one as the intro screen because it's it's got pack on it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just we could probably just put this up for the whole time, probably. Yeah, right? I don't have any other like topic thingies prepared. It's just pack mm -hmm. is the topic today. Okay. Apparently, you still need to turn <laughs> me up like a little bit. By the way. Hmm. Apparently, you still need to turn me up like a little bit. All right. Turn up. Am I still quiet, Chant? How's it now? Is it good? Are we all equal? Test Fafa. One, two, three. You're wow, sitting wow. at 160% now on Discord, so. Hooey. Too loud. All right, let's just do <laughs> 133, maybe. That sounds about right. And then they can cry about it. Just mute Farfa. Well, I mean, that one <laughs> that, that, isn't that, really going to work. It's weird, but because they always <laughs> say that. They say that every week, so I don't know. Funniest Joshua Schmidt viewer joke. Yo. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> they, right, they, they're starting. some comedians. <laughs> we can hear right. Farfa. He's too loud. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. We got it. Let's go. And, uh, you know, uh, Pac, give us your shout outs. I think there's a lot of things you wanted mm -hmm. to mention for the socials before you head off. Um, not just, just YouTube and Twitch, I guess. So Pac TZG. That's it. Yep. You're going to find, you're going to find Pac's links in the description if you're watching on YouTube. And, um, Thank you so much for hopping on. It was a pleasure to have you. And uh, yeah. thank you guys for <clears throat> listening. Big fan. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Thank you. Bye, chat. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. All right. Oh, you just dipped. Like, I was just ending the episode. But <laughs> man just left. <laughs> no, man. Dude, he's got, a, he's got a work meeting, I think. Yeah, yeah that's right. I, I got I to gotta dip as well. I got to go get <laughs> unvaccinated. Um, have a good stream. I'll... Uh, Probably, I guess I'll see you in España. Yep. So, All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Dude, Pack just dipped. <laughs> okay. España. Yeah, we're doing the. Um, Farfa and I are doing the. We're commentating the Master Duel Invitational this weekend. Um. Which, looking back, is actually a shame, because Pac asked me last minute if I wanted to hop in for YCS Las Vegas. And I actually, I'm so pumped, because we don't have any events in, uh, in Europe at the moment. Like, I, I, maybe I would have, because like, I'm missing, I'm, I miss playing in a YCS. Uh, it, it's getting so, I'm so down bad. I'm so down bad that I might, uh, I, I'm looking at like YCS Rally, maybe. You guys know I hate flying, but I'm down bad. Not having a YCS in like what, what's looking to be more than half a year is rough for me. Oof. Oh yeah, I guess the sub sound was disabled during the thingy. So I guess you guys all held back on the subs because the race sub sound was not playing during the podcast. So yeah. I don't think we're getting one. I also, I, I think the last, the next one is going to be after national season for Europe, I think. Like, that's uh, probably what it's looking like, uh, is like we get nationals next. Because they did announce, uh, they did announce um, Euros already. The what sub sound? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You, none of your business. It's fine. It's fine. You don't need to know. Come to the US? I might. I might. I might. No, stop testing. <laughs> Appreciate the three months. Uh, look, I lost a wager. I lost a wager, okay? It's not my fault that it's, that it's the sub sound. I lost a wager against chat. I'm just paying my... I'm paying what I, what I owe is, the, is what happened. The flight is more expensive than a Snake Eye deck, no cap. Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll see. I haven't checked yet. I haven't checked anything yet. I know there is, uh, there's two 
YCSs in the US at some point in the near future. There's YCS Rally and YCS Indianapolis. Like if I'm if I'm super down bad on uh, on YCSs, like you know, like I I I need that stuff. I need that. Like usually, I'm like. Stop testing the sub sound. Let me speak. Uh, I'm like happy with the amount of YCSs that we usually get in, in Europe. Because normally it's like, how many is it? Four or five in a year. It's like four YCSs, nationals, euros. So that's six events. Plus, if everything goes well, we got world two, you know, fingers crossed every time. Uh, so it's like that's six to seven major events per year which roughly average is like one every two months which it's on the lower end but i'm usually happy with it um but like even lower than that at the moment it's pretty rough for me <laughs> thank you for the 17 months stereo when does national season start usually april Usually. Why, you, why do you buy all those cards if you don't play them competitively? Well, because I mean, that's the thing. On the one hand, I'm asking myself the same question. You're not, you're not, it's not an unreasonable thing to ask. On the other hand, I don't, I don't just play and own cards to participate in the big tournaments. I also, uh, like, I mean, I enjoy every form of Yu-Gi-Oh, not just YCSs. So, yeah. Nats have started the first week of May the last two years, I think. Really? I thought it was always some some smaller countries got them, like, late April already. But, I mean, I guess we'll see. It is about time that we're going to be... Uh, we're getting announcements for nationals soon, I assume. I hope. Are you coming to the German Open next month? The one in Frankfurt? I have a ticket. Yeah, so I'm planning to go. It's in my calendar. Uh, unless something important comes up, I'll probably be there. Or unless I'm sick, like I was last time. But, yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> chat, I, oh my god, my food is already somewhat cold, and so it's okay. Um, I wanna, I wanna, even though the title says we're playing Master Duel later, we still have way over two hours uh, left on the stream. So I, I don't want to hop into Master Duel right away, because I thought we were going to get more, like, format talk done before the podcast. But I actually think it's rather fitting, like, because we just spent over an hour talking about the format with pack i think it's the perfect time to look into some because we've gotten a lot of i think detailed takes out of pack and a lot of detailed discussion on the fire king deck specifically you know on the environment it creates so i think now is a really good moment to take a look at maybe some decks that aren't fire king that have been doing well regardless right um, and how they maybe fit into this sort of overall environment, the situation that is being created by the fire decks, right? Um, so let us let let's take some time to let me move over to that side. Let's take some time to check out some decks that were not um, maybe Fire King Snake Eye or Pure Snake Eye, right? And Something uh, someone mentioned earlier, and that pack also mentioned, is Salamangrate. Salamangrate got top 8 at the Lubbock, Texas Regional. And I'm here for it. I am here for it. Because, I mean, the deck also got boosts from... Surely it, got, it gets boosts from all the fire support as well. So let me, let me check that out. Don't watch that, trust me. No, I, I love Salem Angry way too much. I need to. We're I don't here have a choice. with Top 8 Duelists. What's your name? What you play? Hey, uh, this is Michael Lee. I got 6th place at the Lubbock Regional uh, in the Tier 0 format, playing the fire deck known as Salem Angry. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So, just to preface, I haven't it's played locals format. in like half a year. This deck is complete theory. I've never actually played this against another human being until today. It's pure simulator in theory. Okay. Right. But yeah, let's get into it. Okay. Uh, start out with three flame buffalo, three gazelle, three spinny, standard three O's, the one foxy, the one jack jaguar, the one weasel, 
this helps play around the biru. The one uh, Samagrit of Fire. Um, this is a potential Mirage Dalio target. It is also a circle target to search. You don't want to play three because this deck goes into Wicked, and you also want the options to potentially go into SP or. Dude, Salamangrid of Fire should have been a level one. You heard it here first. It should have been a level one. Other cards that aren't fires. Gotcha, gotcha. The one Falco, the one Tiger, and the one Beat Bison. This outscores. The what? Beat Bison. If you have three or more Salamangrid monsters in your graveyard, special summon this card from your hand in defense position. Target a fire link in your grave, up to number of face-up cards your opponent controls. Return to the extra deck, negate the effects. What? Oh, wrong deck profile? Because you can just negate everything they have face up. Um, so... It was a reason. The reason why I'm playing Flame Buffalo... What was the reasoning? And Beat Bison. This outs Horus. Because you can just negate everything they have face up. It outs Horus. Okay. So, um, so the reason and why that, I'm playing... That's, that's enough reason to play Beat Bison? I'm driving to work. I heard Beat Bison. I almost crashed. <laughs> oh, God. Flame Buffalo instead of Lady Debug is because the goal of this deck is utility. Okay, so some of you might get this reference, but when it comes to itemization, you, you want to complete legendary items for the passive and active that it grants you. It's not about the stats, right? So if you build Bami Cinder, the passive Immolate, you already have essentially the full item. You don't need to finish Sunfire Cave. You don't need to finish Hollow Radiance. Verdant Barrier also essentially gives you the item. You finish the legendary item for the passive, for the utility, not necessarily the stats. If you want stats, just build the other components. Uh, This deck already has a solved one card combo. One card combo gets you roar, two card combo gets you rage. The advantage this deck has over, let's say, Fire King is the utility. Um, the way I won a lot of my games is because these one of cards, this toolbox, gives me a lot of utility. So, it, like, when I play against Pierce Snake Eye, uh, they will play, but they won't necessarily kill me or negate everything, and I'll just play into their board. And over time, they just run out of things. Like, you can activate Flamberish, summon as many level 1s as you want, but you're eventually going to run out. And just just the Promethean itself is not enough. To I thought about saying something about it, but I, I didn't know what to say. And at the same time, I don't understand why we switched to a different language in the middle of the profile. Like, just, just use subtitles, bro. Like, what, what? I don't know. To crack open salad. And I'll just take over the game with the utility. Okay. okay. Um, Lady Debug gives you a bigger end board. I know people are searching Will and uh, using the effect to summon four, you can end on Baron or SP, but the goal is not to increase the end board. If you want a big end board, play Fire Kings, right? That's, that's like stats, one card, the, the, the most amount of stats. Sure. Even though this, this deck doesn't give you the most stats, it's the utility, right? You, you know when someone Buffalo, they go IP, make SP, banish the Buffalo, because that was at three, you can still play. It's the utility that matters. True, true. So to finish it out, three circle, three mining, the one field spell. Um, Exceed uh, is all right. Um, I just needed another extender in the deck. Uh, and going second, I usually slide all this out. Uh, it's really weak against uh, Promethean. If you make a link summon and you try to use uh, Exceed or just Promethean, pop it and it won't resolve. It's also really weak against like a lot of uh, spot removal. But going first, this allows you to push through hand traps. It just gets, like the whole purpose is just to get you to Promethean and to leak four. I don't even play like a Dweller or XYZs. Okay, interesting. Um, the one charge, the two roar, because the two card combo you- The one what? Did you just type Salamangrid into the database and put in everything?
Activate one of these effects. Target three of your friars that are banished in your grave. Shuffle two of the three in the deck. If you do special the remaining. Negated. Control the fire. Target the card if you destroy it. Okay. Uh, uh. The problem I have with this card is that it's obviously dead in the beginning of the game. Like, it's not a starter card. It's just purely, you know, but okay. I can see what that card is meant to do, at least. It reset the world with its own effect, so it's banished when it leaves. So the second one is just there in rotation. The one rage. Um, the charge is very important because it's additional recycling. and also lets you recycle banished. So even though your salad cards are banished, you can now recycle them. So it's an extra layer. Um, oftentimes, when charge is engraved, use Falco to reset it, especially if you don't have enough extra deck to just get it back. So for the staples, the two Fenrir, this is just, once again, utility. Uh, in the hand trap back and forth, this card is really, really good. It's king. It outs like uh, random flag. The one thing that's cool about charge, I think, is that it makes Salamangrate technically go infinite, right? Like, technically, you can run out of Salamangrate link monsters and stuff like that. If you play charge, you can never run out of stuff, right? Because Falco can always recycle charge. Not that that really matters. Something like a, a mid-range slash control deck going infinite doesn't really matter in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! most of the time because the game doesn't go on that long anymore. But in theory, that's what it would do, right? Like, it, uh, this card makes the deck go infinite because it's recyclable, as opposed to something like Fire Recovery, which isn't searchable or re recyclable, right? Like it's and just really good and simplified. And for the staples, I am playing a lot less than what most people are running in their fire decks. I'm only playing eight hand traps. Normal distribution, you're going to open one. Uh, the reason why is because going first, playing 16 hand traps or 15 uh, staples is not optimal. Because if you open one starter and four hand traps and your opponent opens four engine cards and one hand trap, you're losing. Uh, when you're going first, you, you don't want that many hand traps. So some people side going first cards, like uh, Solemn Judgment or Floodgates, but I think Engine is better for going first. But if I'm playing Engine, you probably just main deck and set aside it. So 40 cards in main. All right, nice, nice, can I see it? All right, going. Mm. So that argument, actually, I see where he's coming from. Like the, it is something that I noticed with the deck like the the pure snake eye deck i played that had like 15 or 18 hand traps in the main deck like yeah i noticed like sometimes going first i don't actually play the game right uh like that logic is sound you know like you want to definitely have for game one for game one when you don't know whether you're going to be able to go first or second you somehow need to make sure you need to balance and your deck needs to be able to make to do both things right your deck needs to be able to in theory consistently play going first with five cards maybe through one or two hand traps as well and your deck in theory also needs to be capable of playing going second now of course the two scenarios that he's describing are quite far apart from each other he's saying like okay with i'm playing eight because then it average uh, averages about two like about one hand trap when i go second uh and i don't want to play too many hand traps because then i'm sitting there when i go first and i draw four of them right there is quite a few steps between opening one on average and then consistently opening like four, right? There's we're leaving a pretty big gap in the middle. And I think uh I think that's kind of the sweet spot is like when you draw one consistently, if you want to play hand traps in the first place. Like you want to draw one consistently, but you want a good chance at drawing two. You want drawing three or more to be an exception, like an unlucky thing that happens sometimes when you don't open engine, but too many hand traps, right? I think with eight hand traps, we are on a, a little bit of the too low end because like one hand trap, the average being one hand trap uh, and very rarely drawing multiples is like you, going second. I don't think that's enough in this format, but no. To the extra deck, okay. it is very tight, two bay links. To Sunlight Wolf. One Heat Leo. There's a lot of continuous spells that you want to get rid of right now. Like there's Barrier, there's uh, Sark, uh, 
and the two Blazing Phoenix. Um, the two Wolf and two Phalanx is very tight. That's why I play Charge. But extra deck space is very important, especially once we get Code of Soul, as we have to play the other Pyro Phoenix, as we can relink it. The one Rach Dalio, the Promethean Princess. This is how you play around Nibiru. There are tutorials on YouTube. Just search up Silent Great Nibiru, and they'll let you know how it is. This lets you search uh, for Weasel. Oh wow. The SP, the Hita, which you play in the Fire Mirrors. This, uh, people probably know the combo by now, it lets you search Ash right now. It can also summon Buffalo to draw two, uh, but after Code of Soul comes out, that's the other option. You just summon Code of Soul with it. And it's a lot less restrictive because with searching Ash, you have to make sure Stalo is on field, but with Code of Soul, you can just summon. What happened between him and Horus? That's what I was wondering too. I was like, you watch this profile, you know that like someone in their friend group is terrorizing everyone with a Horus deck. Like, Friggin' main decking beat Bison. And then, uh, yeah, talk, just talking about Horus nonstop with, <laughs> with Heat Leo. <laughs> yeah. And the last card is the Typhon. Um, it's, it's actually decent. Um, it's not the best, but it does out non-targeting. And uh, it stops Flamberge. And uh, it lets you stall the game until you can just take over with your grinding utility. For the side deck, we've got... Two Droll, three Bell. I didn't play against Labyrinth, so it's whatever. Um, two Ogre, two Nibiru. How do you like Ogre? Um, Ogre was pretty good against uh, Centurion. It's just you want a diversity of hand traps. With my current lineup, my entire side deck is hand traps. With Ogre's for Horus, too. With my current uh, lineup, I have 16 hand traps after the side deck for every single matchup. So that gives you a normal distribution of two, nice, which nice. is what you need. And just play this card. There's no explanation. Delta, just Delta play. Yeah. Like, it's becoming popular now. I'm not the only one playing it anymore. But uh, just being able to get a clean hit. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of the fire decks have one card combos, but they also get stopped by one card. And the, the chances of them opening multiple one card starters is like equivalent to the chances of them opening bricks as well, right? So it's just math. And the last card inside is the Baguska. So yeah, the theory behind is this math. is against the non fire decks, you side out the Hida for the Baguska. And Hold up. I'm pretty sure that math did not math. Hold up. One card. And the, the chances of them opening multiple one card starters is like equivalent to the chance of them opening bricks as well, right? So it's just math. Opening multiple one card, card combos, but they also get stopped by one card. And the, the chances of them opening multiple one card starters is like equivalent to the chance of them opening bricks as well, right? So it's just math. And the it's just math. I can't argue with that. Can't argue with that one bit, yeah. The last card inside is the Baguska. So the theory behind this is against the non-fire decks, you side out yeah, the Yeah, no, they're right. It's 50-50. They either have an extender or they bricked. Ah, it's 50-50. Two options, 50-50. Yeah, it's just math. Before the Baguska. And argue. the non-fire decks are usually the decks that are playing D-Shifter. We can't argue with it. We can't argue with science. You XC and you just end on Baguska. Uh, if you're playing against voice, Voiceless Voice, I don't know if they play Shifter, maybe, like, if they do, you can do it. Yeah. Even against Voiceless, like, Baguska is just good. Uh, they just uh, all get put into defense. Sure. Uh, I know Pearly, some Pearly players also play Shifter, and, like, even without Shifter, like, Pearly doesn't have any fires, and just Baguska just has everything. Okay. And that's the deck. Alright, anything else for me? Uh, yeah, uh, shoutouts to Austin, shoutouts to College Station, shoutouts to LS. And uh, shout outs to Denny Vu for doing Bortles Deck Profile. Oh, appreciate it, bro. And shout outs to Math, dude. Because without Math, this wouldn't be possible. Well, yeah, okay. Mm -mm -mm. That was uh That was a that was a deck profile for sure. That was a deck profile for sure. I warned you. No, I mean, I, it was fun, though. It was funny. I don't know if, if it was serious. If it was, then... Maybe it's not as funny anymore. Um, I'll, I'd like to pretend it wasn't. Okay. Um, where, were, where are the Raid Raptors? There. Two... Dude. Two Raid Raptors made top eight at the regional. Here. Uh, two 
Raid Raptors made top 8 at the regional. I, I need to see this. And I got the... I got the freaking what's it called the the card database open because I not I know none of these things, none of these things. New support is crazy. I have heard so there's there's I'm going into this with a little bit of knowledge, not with the actual cards, but I have some context for you guys. Like I have seen the Raid Raptor deck being discussed in different like on different occasions. Like people are actually talking about this, you know. Uh, people are actually looking into these sort of combos and actually uh, there's a couple of people that think the deck has quite a bit of potential now whether I'm a believer or not I can't actually say yet because I genuinely I, I mean we've probably read those cards at some point um, when they were first announced but I forgot what they did so hey guys so we're here with a special guest today KP who just finished third place at the remote regionals with raid raptors so huge congrats to you uh what are your thoughts on this deck for this new format uh i really like the deck um i did pretty well during goki format and i kind of treat this deck as like another goki um one big advantage of this okay that's not a that's not a good start that's not a good intro i you, you shouldn't have said that no i am significantly less interested and i'm hoping your deck sucks but okay deck is just that people have a hard time understanding like how to interrupt the deck it's been around for a while the cards are have been but the new cards just makes it really good and it just it's kind of unexpected but if you go first you definitely win but i also play 15 hand traps so if i stop my opponent i still have a chance of winning um i i haven't really bricked in a long time like you can brick it is possible but for the most part it's very consistent you just want to get two birds on the board and then just full combo awesome well let's Dude, that's, that might be one of my least favorite sentences. Like, behind Normal Summon Loki, Loki, Normal Summon cir uh, Use Circular Effect, like, bring two, get two birds onto the board is, like, it's probably number three. Get right into the list, then. Okay, so, for Hand Traps, three Valor, three Droll, three Ash, and three Nib. And I might as well just go ahead and show it now. <laughs> three Imperm. These 15, these 15 are the pivotal point of the format. And ironically, if you can find a deck, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a hard, it's a hard task, but if you can find a deck that beats most of those, uh, I, th I think that's, that might be key to this current format because I think um, everyone is going to do this to counter Snake Eye. And ironically... Snake Eye might not be the best deck out of the decks that we have available to beat hand traps. It's just like it overall is the best deck, but it's I wouldn't say Snake Eye is the best deck out there into impermanence, right? For example. Um in this format, board breakers. Branded baby. I understand your confusion. Because when you said that, when when you made that comment, the imperm kind of blocked out the ash blossom, right? You you made that comment here, right? But I think now that he moved the card down, I think you uh, you realize how that was a certified brandy chatting moment, right? The ash, it's actually there. It wasn't. It was only the imperm was on top of it. So, yeah. Enough. You can break the whole board of the Fire King Snake Eye, but as long as they have a loaded grave, like they're still gonna be able to interrupt you, maybe two, three times past that. And they play a lot of hand traps. So even when you break the board. It only takes them one like one card to full combo, so they still have Ash, Nib, Valor, Imperm, or whatever. So board breakers just aren't good enough. You don't want to let them combo. So these are most important for that deck. And then obviously more rogue strategies or other decks that aren't that good will lose to these as well. So it's just good coverage for the meta, mainly Snake Eye for the Raid Raptors. One Pain Lanius one uh heal eagle you search them in the combo dude there's so many of them man no i don't want to i don't want to read the raid raptor cards man 43 results oh my god dude uh
If all monsters you control are Raid Raptors, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can banish this card from your grave, target a Raid Raptor spell trap in your grave, add it to your hand. Okay, so this is purely an extender slash recovery tool. So it makes sense. It's a one-off. What's the other one? Pain Lanius. That's how I'm feeling. Cannot be used as Xyz material. Except for a winged beast, if this card's in your hand, target a raid raptor you control that has a level, take damage equal to its attack or defense. And if you do special summon this card, if you do that, this card's level becomes... Okay, that's also an extender. That's basically, it's going to copy the level of your raid raptor. Okay. So you don't really need to play more than that. Um, for two ofs, two Mimikurai, and one... Uh... Wait, where's Mimicry? Here. Level 4 Winged Beast. Once per turn during your main phase, if this card was normal or special this turn, you can increase the level of all Raid Raptors by 1. During your main phase, if this card is in the graveyard because it was sent there this turn, you can banish this card, add a Raid Raptor card from your deck to your hand, except Mimic Rylanius. Uh, Okay. That seems like a pretty good card. I'm, I'm surprised that's only a two of, but I'm, I suppose it might not be a one card starter. It's just because you, if you normal summon this, you might not be able to get it to the graveyard, but maybe you can access it from the deck anyways for free or something like that. Um... But yeah, you just get to, it, it goes to grave, you banish it, add another Raid Raptor card. Okay, and then the other one. Uh, dude, which one is that even? This one, Noir Lanius. During your main phase, if this card was normal or special this turn, target a Raid Raptor you control, add a Raid Raptor with a different level. Then that monster from your deck to your hand, banish this card from your grave, increase the level by one. Okay. So, another non, like, none of these are one-card starters so far, but I suppose that's why we play these in, like, one or two ofs. Changes to Noir. Um, I'll get into more later, but uh, Grav only plays one of this, but I just think it's safe to just play two. Um, the new change for the deck, three Raider's Wing. Raider's Wing. Wait, that's not, that's not even a Raid Raptor card. Oh, my God. Raiders Wing. It is well. I mean, okay, dude. It's the you guys are you guys are nerging so hard right now. This card's always treated as a raid raptor card. If this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can detach one material from your dark exceeds monster. Special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. Only uses its effect once per turn. An Xyz monster whose original attribute is dark and has this card as material gains this effect. Cannot target this card with card effect. Okay, another extender. So I took out one Noir and fit in two extra spots. Uh, my deck list is 44. So 42 if you don't play these extra two. Um... I'm Gorav, the guy who got fifth. Both me and Kyler made the same decklist. We have the combo video on our channel. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah, maybe I'll look into that if the, if it's not included in the um in the profile. It's okay in this deck to play over forty, just because you have a lot of search cards and things you don't really want to draw. So it kind of helps you brick less uh, less often, but it's still consistent enough to draw maybe two hand traps and two cards to play with. Um, but this card, what it does is while it's under an XZ material, it's an XZ material, uh, the card cannot be targeted that it's attached to. So you can basically do your whole combo without getting impermed or Valored. So it's just really strong. And also has another effect that you can detach from an XZ, the specialist from your hand or grave. So it's like a pretty good extender as well. Effectively, if you just start with Raider's Knight, uh, it basically plays around three hand traps because it stops Valor and imperm but it also plays so around is the plan like you draw this and and any like generic extender and you you make an untargetable first play right to stop imperm valor is that like the the idea behind it 
if you can like if you have a two card combo including this card you can make untargetable uh okay nibiru so you basically beat three hand traps off of just this one card uh three bloom is just a good extend that's the new one right oh no i zoomed i misclicked there it is uh bloom vulture that is the new card from phantom nightmare yes if you do not control any face-up monsters other than winged beast special summon both this card and a raid raptor from your hand if you control no monsters you can target two level four or lower raid raptors in your grave including this card Special summon in defense position. You can only use one effect per turn, only once that turn. Also, you're locked into darks. Okay, so this is like... This is the second piece that you can draw with any other Raid Raptor to just get going. And then it also gives you follow-up in case your board gets completely wiped, I suppose. Right? Yeah, okay. Grave. Or if you're starting, you can use it from your hand to summon it and another one from your hand. Um, three fuzzy. So this Do you ever get to use the graveyard effect on the first turn? It's just a good extender. It's off of just this one card. Uh, three bloom. It's just a good extender and a uh, great follow up if your board gets broken because okay. it can summon it in another one from your grave. Or if you're starting, you can use it from your hand to summon it in another one from your hand. Okay. Um, three fuzzy. Fuzzy Lanius. If you control a Raid Raptor monster, other than Fuzzy Lanius, you can special summon this card from your hand. If this card is sent... <laughs> if this card is sent to the graveyard, add a Fuzzy Lanius from deck to hand. You can only use each effect once per turn. You cannot special summon monsters to turn you activate either of this card's effect, except Raid Raptor monsters. So, is the idea like... Is this your best normal summon? Because... You just like summon it once, like normal summon it once, and then get another one later. Or is there a better one card? I mean, it's not a one card starter per se, right? Like it's not a one card combo, but it's an extender. Okay. Uh, okay. Since this is pure Raid Raptor, you get to abuse Fuzzy. It's just really strong because you get to add another copy and special for free, but you're locked into Raid Raptor, so that's why you got to play it only in pure. Uh, three strangle. Dude, who made all these? Strangleanius. If you control the dark monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. Also, can you? Why don't we? Can we start with the normal summon first? Like, it's all we're showing. All the, everything is an extender. If you control the dark monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. Also, you cannot special summon for the rest of your turn except darks. If you control an Xyz monster with dark Xyz material as mate uh, dark monster, no. If you control an Xyz monster with a dark Xyz monster as material, you can target a level four or lower raid raptor in your grave, special summon it, but its effects are negated. Phenomenal timing. Thank you for the gift. I appreciate you. That's a great extender. Uh, and then three tribute lanius. It's dude. How many of them things? Turn your main phase. If this card was normal or special summon this turn, there we go. A starter card. You can send a raid raptor card from your deck to the graveyard. During your main phase two, blah. I'm not reading. I'm not reading a main phase two effect. This deck does not have a main phase two. During your main phase. So it's just foolishes, right? This foolishes, which can give you a couple different lines, right? Like we already saw some with different graveyard effects, so. The best starter that you can have. Um, sometimes people even hand trap it, which if you have an extender already, it, it hurts them to hand trap you this early. But if this is your only play and you normal summon it and they ash it or something, it could stop your whole combo. And then some more is also okay. really good. I don't, I don't need to read that one, right? It's like when you normal summon a winged beast, you can also normal summon this. Good extender. A couple cool things about this card is since it's a normal summon, it doesn't trigger princess in their grave and is also high enough attack to attack over an SP. So that kind of can come up 
And then the last few cards, one foolish burial. Wait, so is any of them a one card combo? Is it just the is it just the normal summon like the Armageddon Knight? Everything else is just extenders, no? Okay. This is an extender or a starter one card full combo, so that's why you got to play that. Uh, one roost, and then the rank ups. Oh no, the rank ups, dude! We're playing the rank ups. You have to be kidding me. Roost. If a Raid Raptor monster is spell summoned from the extra deck to your field, you can add a Raid Raptor spell and trap from your deck to your hand. You can target three, place them, draw a card. Okay, this also is, is more extension. Uh, I'm assuming you can search this for free at some point. No, man. I don't want to search for rank up magic. There's going to be so many. This and this. Skip force. That's one of them, right? Skip force. Yeah. Target a Raid Raptor Exceeds monster you control. Special summon from your extra deck a Raid Raptor monster that is two ranks higher than that target by using it as material during your main phase. Except to turn this card was sent to the grave. Banish this card and a Raid Raptor from your grave. Target a Raid Raptor Exceeds in the grave. Special summon it. Okay, so on the first turn, it just ranks up into two higher. Okay, noted. And then the other one is the Raid Raptor Force, right? Yeah, it's just a Raid Raptor Force, which is... Also in Phantom Nightmare. During the main phase or your opponent's battle phase, target two or more Raid Raptor Xyz you control and or in your grave, including a monster on the field. If at least two remain face up at resolution, special a Raid Raptor from your extra deck with a rank equal to their combined ranks, and if you do, attach the targeted monsters to it as material. Uh, okay. Not playing the Kaliuga build. Um... And then the one trap. What does that mean? The one trap. The uh, raid raptor. Glorious bright. If you control a raid raptor monster, target a face up monster your opponent controls, or if you control a raid raptor exceeds, you can target a card. Negate that card effects until the end of this turn. Oh, okay. So it's either an imperm or. It can also use, you can use it on spells too. Or like evenly. Banish this card from your grave. Okay, some follow up too. Okay. The reason why we don't play Kali Yuga is because there's so many hand traps on this format. You pretty much, you can't play through hand traps as well as this build. Because you have to cut down, like you don't have fuzzy since you're going into other plays. You can't play a fuzzy build, but it still like will lose to any hand trap. But a lot of the Kaliuga builds will play the Phantom Knight cards and other bricks, and then it also loses to Hand Trap, so... Is there any non-engine in this deck? Uh, there was. There was non-engine. It was like 15 Hand Traps, so it's not too bad on that end. My initial concern, once again, without having looked at any of the lines, just like... My initial concern would be that there was only one true, like, one-card starter, which if... Like, normally, it's not too bad if you play a deck that only has one card starters, like, that only has one one card starter. Like, for example, you look at, like, uh, Unchained, that only had Tour Guide, or you look at, I don't know, Runic decks, they don't have a single one card starter per se, right? Um, but in such a heavy combo deck, I would think you would want more than just one one card starter. Everything else is two card combos, unless I'm missing something. Some interaction about the, about this entire thing, like, it's just the one that foolish is, right? You can play any extender as a bad starter and go from there because everything is an extender. That is true. I think um, I think the uh, the ability to play with like I think the the way I'm looking at this deck is I it, it probably has the ability to play almost every single time. Like almost every hand in theory is gonna be playable. My issue is that when your deck mostly focuses around two card combos, um that usually is 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 rather 
how do you say it? it's rather vulnerable to disruption whether you're going first or second is another question but like if for example i don't know how good hand traps are against this deck right like but for example if you start a, a two card combo and that two card combo gets stopped by ash blossom then you're not trading favorably right um, but I don't know if uh, I don't know how weak the combos are to certain hand traps, so that's something I would need to find out. So that's why. Uh, for the extra deck, three, four tricks. This is just I've... detach one, search one, level four winged beast or something like that, right? It's just detach one, search one, right? Relatively simple. To play lowest rarity, so I'm happy I, put, I picked up the new OTS commons. Uh, same with the other cards in my deck. Uh, two Raiders Knight. Raiders Knight ranks up into a rank five dark, right? One is to start. If you get hand trapped to the point that you basically can't combo, let's say they hand trap you two or three times, and you just end on this, but you also have hand traps. So what you can do is uh, you need the second copy. So if you end up nibbing or your board gets cleared and you hand trap them, but it goes back to you and simple game. You only lose to Imperm. You can play through Droll, Nib, and Ash. Okay. But how bad would you say is Imperm? Like, in on a scale from it always ends your turn to, like, if you have a good extender, you can play through it. Like, how, how bad is it? Like, is it a, is it a, let, let's, let's say, let's say it on another, like, is it closer to Imperm against, Imperm against Raid Raptor? Is it closer to how Ash is against Branded or how Ash is against, um, Snake Eyes, for example? Like, is it, is it closer to the Branded example or is it closer to the, to the Snake Eyes example? Pretty much Branded? Okay. Game states, you just make the second copy to build a combo. Uh, one change I made is I'm playing one Baguska. Um, it's very difficult to make in this deck because you can get locked with Darks or Raid Raptors. Mainly, like a combo with some more can can get to it. The main reason we we I was playing this card is if you get shifted, you can't really do your combo. So if I was able to have a way to make a Baguska and why deck. hold up another thing is there a big difference between Valor and Imperm is there like a card here that is unaffected by monster effects that you need Imperm for or is it the same because that's a big information too because you said like you said uh it needs like Imperm is 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 powerful big like Veil no difference okay 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 like Keshtira or Flu I was hoping that maybe it would be able to stall me a turn. But it never I, came I mean, up. I hope you realize how that is not a great position to be in right now. Let's say it like that in the current format, right? Because it's, it's good that you are able to play through Droll or Nibiru, right? If the deck has lines for those cards, that's, that's, pl that's a plus. That's good. Um, but being weak to Imperm or Valor at the moment is... That's, I mean, those cards are very popular right now. There's probably formats like, uh, in in a world, in, in a, let let's let's go into an imaginary hypothetical world where this deck has, uh, is 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 super good unless your opponent has Imperm or Valor. Like, there is probably a format where you could whip that deck out and be like, yeah, uh, I'm observing the trend that no one is playing Imperm or Valor at the moment, or maybe they are Valoring or Imperming the wrong thing against this deck, right? Then you could find a spot where the deck would work. If, but I, I, I have a hard time believing that that time would be right now. You can play through Imperm, but you risk losing to Nip. Okay, so there's like a, there's, what you're saying is there's an alternative line that you can take if you think they have Imperm, but then if they have Nip, you get punished for doing that. Okay. All right. Uh, one Brave. Okay, this one I need to read. Brave Strix, I got no idea. Uh, Brave Strix. Two level fives. A Raid Raptor that has this card as material gains this effect. 
you can this card gains attack you can only use one of the following per effects per turn one set turn detach one material set a rate raptor spell trap from your deck if this card has a winged beast as material you can detach uh, add a rank up magic spell from deck to hand is this the one you rank up to with raiders knight yes oh wait is the entire plan is the entire plan that you go for this you search a rank up spell and then you go into the rank seven raid raptor that that summons one from the deck is that the line yeah okay i get i get it okay 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 so like you are going rank five that searches a rank up spell and then you rank up into the Arsenal Falcon. So wouldn't one way to play through Imperm... Theoretically, let's say uh, you're Imperming. Would you Imperm the rank 5 or the rank 4 then? What's better? Because in my head, if you Imperm the rank 5... If they hard draw the rank up thing... Because they play 2, right? They're, they might still go for the same play... Even if they already have one in hand, then they go for this. You imperm it if they already have the spell, they just keep playing. However, if you if you imperm the Raider's Knight, then they theoretically can still use this effect if they manage to get to it later on. The rank four is better because it's okay. Yeah, I see. Jane! Thank you for the 10 gifties. Appreciate that. Thank you. Appreciate that so much. Appreciate your continuous support to the community. Everyone, enjoy your subs. Enjoy the, enjoy the generous gift. Thank you, thank you. Uh, okay. All right. Noted. Um, the and then you have the Arsenal Falcon. I know that one from Cash Tira times. That summons something. It summons like, what, a level four winged beast out of your deck or something like that. Level four lower winged beast. I don't know. Summons one from the deck. And then Arc Rebellion is just an alternative line, I think, for going second or something like that arsenal and then the arc rebellion is good because in simple game states you can gain attack equal to all the original attacks on the field i'm pretty sure the arc rebellion is not something that comes up in the standard combo lines right that's something you would do going second or something like that and attack over a monster for game um i had a couple situations where i wanted to make it but my opponent was able to stop it um a cool thing is this can't be destroyed by card effects and then if you have Raider's Wing under it, it can't be targeted. So it can't be targeted Very with cool. card effects. And you can basically negate everything on the board, gain attack, and just attack for game. So it's it's pretty good. It just didn't come up for me today. You have not read all of Arsenal Falcon. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming it might have a hidden effect in, in Raid Raptors because it's only been used in Cash Tira, at least for, for where I've seen it. Spare some level 4 Winged Beast from the deck. If this card has any number of raid raptor monsters as material it can attack up to that many times if this card is sent to the grave while it has a raid raptor as material you can special a raid raptor exceed yeah okay yep 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 yep, yep, yep. some other cards uh the bigger ones we got the two towers Dude, who are these well i know i know this, this one i don't know this and this oh this is the phantom nightmare one the rank 13 right uh, ba, ba, ba. was that that one? No. It was this one. Rising Rebellion. Yeah, that's the rank 13. Unaffected by other cards' effects. If this card's exceeds summoned, you can destroy as many cards your opponent controls as possible. Then, if this card has three or more Raid Raptor exceeds with different names as material, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the combined original attack of the destroyed monsters. Once per turn, you can detach three materials from this card. Target a Raid Raptor exceeds monster from your grave. This card uh, gains that monster's effects until the end phase. Okay, so it's unaffected, and one of the rank ups was a quick play, I believe. So you can just summon it on your opponent's turn as well, I assume, and just blow up the entire board. Okay. If they like. Oh, what's the other one? Uh. Oh, this guy, Satellite Cannon Falcon, two level eight winged beast. If this card is exceed summoned by using a raid raptor you control as material. Destroy all spell and traps your opponent's control. Your opponent cannot activate cards or effect response. Quick effect, detached, and target. Oh, because the other rank up 
that the 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 rank up the raid raptor rank up force can go like you can target one rank four on your in the grave one rank four on the field and then you make a rank eight with those right that's how it works You can never use the duster effect. It's just needed for some lines that use the last effect. Okay. Wait, does that does does the does this one not count as an Xyz summon? This is treated as an Xyz summon. Target two or more raid raptors you control and or in the grave. oh i see it's not they are not used they are not used as the exceed material the thing is summoned and then they are attached to it it's not the same thing okay i see i see what you mean yeah okay like called by the grave or bestial you're brave you still want to have something to summon off the rank up yeah okay so the way this works is you're gonna target things that let that equal 13 right you want to target stuff that equals 13 to summon this guy but if your opponent messes with it you know if your opponent messes with it and you can only get to eight you still want to have something to get off of it okay you can use two fours to make this there's also other combos where if it's an awkward hand playing through hand traps you can make this and then if you have a brave engrave you can use the brave in this to make the arc rebellion because it adds up to 15. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, it adds up to 13 because of the five um, of the brave tricks, and this is an eight. So that takes care of that. Um, this is part of the combos. Uh, it's really good if you can get to this going second. Um, breaking through boards is. So, what's the end board? Do we end on the trap card that can negate anything? Like a towers, and then a way to summon this on the opponent's turn to destroy everything and be a towers. Is that like, is that the the situation roughly? Two towers trap rank up. Oh, so like, roughly what I said, right? I said like we have a towers monster, we have the trap card to negate, and then we have another way to summon into a towers. Rank up into the third tower. Oh, they end on two towers even. Okay. So what? Do you make one of the rank 13s on the first turn? I'm assuming that's why we play two. So is it like... stand? Let's say standard, uninterrupted. Uh, we have one 13, one falcon. Well, I guess they're all falcons. But this guy... You have the rank up trap and you have the trap. Okay. Uh, rank Back up spell and the trap. Okay, okay, okay. They can't activate cards for the rest of the turn. But also, when you're going first, you make this and turn so off. So, you use a fusion spell to synchro summon and exceed? Uh, yeah, essentially. Yeah. Off card effects. It really, it's really good at baiting nib because once you activate this, they have to nib there. And since this is a tower, it stays on the board. Um, and then two of these, a lot of times you play both in every duel. Um, I make one going first, and then I also make one on their turn. So, you basically end on three towers um, in your combo, and it's. Pretty tough for most decks to deal with. Another thing is Brave makes it 5,300 I mean, attack. So pretty tough to deal with. How, in theory, how do you deal with it? Like if you're playing, let's say you're playing Snake Eyes, right? And your opponent resolves the combo. Move move aside the, like they, they have an Omni Negate. Let's say you can bait out the Omni Negate. Let's say you can bait out the, the rank up and you can still play after. What is like Raging Phoenix attack over Kurikara? Oh, Kurikara, uh, Kurikara works. Uh, Axis Co Talker is big. Um, I mean, Kurikara, you contribute the one that they summon on your turn. Right. Like a runix that popped Kirin can swing over Ultimate Falcon. Right. Ultimate Falcon is 35, right? Ultimate Falcon is weak AF. That thing's 35. So you can uh yeah. Kurikara doesn't out ultimate. Yeah, it depends how how much you contribute, right? 
Like, if, if, if Kurikara only tributes one monster, then it's not big enough to do anything. If it tributes two and it goes to 4,500, then maybe it's good enough, but... But, yeah, I think the conventional... Let's say the conventional Snake Eye deck doesn't seem like it would have ways to win anymore because, like, yeah, Axis Code isn't even standard. Um, they don't play Underworld Goddess. Uh, Kurikara is also not standard. Some people play it, but it's not standard by any means. So, yeah, it's, it's, it seems rough. Here is the towers. But to be clear, that's never been... Like, the end board being auto-win has never made a deck the best deck on its own. There needs to be other factors, like playing through interruptions, the boards you can make when you get interrupted, the stuff you can do going second. Those are way more important factors, but just as a baseline understanding of what it's trying to achieve. And then two wise tricks. I was Okay, this one I've seen. I might even own them somewhere, but I don't know what it does anymore. If this card is Link Summon, Special Summon, a level 4 Dark Winged Beast from your deck in defense, but negate its effects, also it can't be used as Link Material. If your Raid Raptor exceed effect is activated, set a rank up magic directly from it. Oh, is this how you get both rank ups? Like you search one with Vice Strix and one with the uh, rank 5? Is this why there's two? Okay. I'll say one thing. Uh, right off the bat, what I like about this is that it's it seems relatively straightforward in terms of the of all the cards we're playing. They all have they don't have like a billion different effects. Most cards here have like one or two different effects, uh, and they they're relatively straightforward on why you want to use them. Right? It's not a type of deck where every single card in the deck has like five different applications. Uh, it doesn't mean that I like the deck overall. I just want to make that clear. The uh, I, it's not something I, I, I the the win condition sounds kind of cringe to me, but at least on the way to get there, and especially also, this is not even a good thing only. Like it's it's not like uh, because if you play against it, it's a little bit easier to understand when everything has only one or two effects and not like a billion. So uh, it, it's a little bit. Uh, I'm not saying it's a simple deck to play because you probably still have to practice lines like crazy, but it's uh, at least from the outside, the cards aren't too convoluted. I like that. Playing three last week, but we just cut one for the Baguska. Um, Garav was playing Unban Mathnex Circular, Burning Abyss, it. best really deck. Way. I was still I was still in the Discord call. I was still in the Discord call. I done goofed. I didn't hang up. I did not hang up. <laughs> dude, I got scared, dude. Why would you do that to me? God damn the deer. Holy. Oh god, I forgot to leave the call. Oh my god. Played the uh, Baguska. Um, I was wanting to play, and so was Garav, the Cyframe package of the two Delta, but we weren't able to get them in time for this remote regional. So I just played these. He didn't even play these at all. Um, a cool thing with this card is against Shifter decks, we don't really have a lot of protection from it. So you could side it in, and theoretically, if you just, they Shifter you and you draw it, <laughs> then it's good. Um, but it wasn't like really necessary. I didn't. Uh, the exact size, I don't know, but the term you're looking for is, like, there's two sizes of trading cards, basically. It's standard size, which is Magic, or and Pokemon, the big ones, rather. And then what, what we have, what Yu-Gi-Oh! has, is Japanese size. So you want Japanese size inner sleeves, is what you need to look for. Um... Essentially, if you Google that, you should find it. Like you can, if you want the exact um, 
like uh, thingy like the exact uh, numbers then you can probably google japanese size like numbers or like uh, you know like that but uh, just just go just go japanese size inner sleeves or whatever then then you should be you, you should be able to find it just make sure whatever you get is suitable for japanese size essentially set it in too much the side deck's not really necessary in this deck at all because we play 15 hand traps and full combo for going first so we don't need cards to help us go first that much um, and we can play through hand traps pretty well, but we have all the hand traps for going second. So really, our side decks more or less just for fun. Just um, for fun. Talents and thrust. Um, they're both good for going Please second. Please tell me you have a, a duplicate we'll card in your side deck, because so far you've showed me four one ofs. And the trap for going second. So these are like easy two cards we can put in. Um, and then there's other things we take out for going first. Um, but. Thrust, I do put it in going first sometimes just because you can set the trap or an imperm or something. So it's not bad because we just kind of expect we're going to get hand trapped. And if we don't, we got full combo anyway. So it doesn't matter if we have dead cards. Um, played one soul release. Garav was looking through like bulk at a store and he found one. So then he just gave it to me. So it's the only copy I have. So I put it in. Um, it was good against uh, Brandon. Oh, is that a 3 of coming up? Lock, but they didn't have it all set up on my turn. He did have it in the grave, and I just shotgunned, banished his whole grave, so he was not happy about that. <laughs> uh, one called by the not grave. Not yet. And three cross out. Oh, the first, okay, the first three we of his freaking cross out. This a lot I'm easier, crying. Or at least more confident when we have this in our hands, so it's just nice. I don't think I ever drew it. I this is Kyler Price, times, yes. But... There was times where I would get Asher Valored, and I have this in my hand, and I was just, I didn't even need it. Like, I would just I let... will say, though, just before we finish watching it, in terms of the main and the side deck, it, it looked pretty good. Like, I would imagine uh, if you can make, if you can make uh, Raid Raptors work, it would look something like this, right? Like, for this current format. Like it just seemed like we're playing, uh, we're playing it pretty st straightforward. Like you, we play all the, all the uh, the combo starters and extenders uh, that are good at three. Some engine requirements at one. Uh, we've got room for fifteen hand traps, and we call it a day. We just like, then that's the thing you need to realize when you're playing a deck like this. You're basically just doing what Pack was talking about in the podcast earlier. You're just comparing hands with everybody, right? You're just comparing hands with everybody. Your advantage is that people don't know what you are playing. So sometimes they will, they will use their interruptions incorrectly. Uh, your disadvantage is their deck is probably a little bit stronger than yours, right? Like a, a snake eye deck with 15 hand traps versus this deck on 15 hand traps. You are still going to compare hands and see who's going to be, uh, who's going to be playing through each other's hand traps better. Uh, I think the Snake Eye deck is probably at an advantage, um, but uh, like it's it's still fine. Like it's not bad per se. It's just not the most riveting gameplay in my opinion, right? They go through until a guy double. Uh, imp uh, sorry, he double effect failed me. So in some ways, if you think about it from that perspective, the the Snake Eye format is somewhat open and lets you play whatever you want in that sense it just depends like the snake eye deck is the best deck in this sort of hand trap mini game but technically the other end of the stick is like everything can beat the snake eye deck in this sort of hand trap comparison your odds are worse your odds are worse uh but you still there's no deck that cannot beat the snake eye deck by just using imperm veiler and then having your own combo through it right like it's 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 kind of like like that like that 90 percent of hand traps are useless against this um so we already established even the people that play raid raptors said that imperm and veiler are pretty good against it and that is more like um if someone plays 12 to 15 hand traps and Valor and Imperm are really good against this deck, then that's more like 50% of hand traps are really good against it. So you are um, very much chatting in the chat box right now. I was like, dang, I probably should have just used this on the first one. But <laughs> so I also, this genuine question. Genuine question. 
why why is Nibiru bad against this? What is the <laughs> What is the What's the plan if we get nibbed? Because Arsenal Falcon second effect? Uh okay. So this one floats. So we make this before we can get nibbed. We make this one before we can get nibbed. Because if we get nibbed now, we can still tag out into the extra deck. Uh, and then we make... Which one? Oh, the towers has another effect. Unaffected by other card effects, you can detach your material from this card. For the rest of this turn, all monsters your opponent controls lose a thousand attack. Also, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects. Okay. Do we make this early? Your fifth summon is Arsenal Falcon. You make four Strix. Okay, you make four Strix. Yeah, okay. Not before five, but early. Okay, 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 okay. So you can essentially force your opponent to Nibiru you early. And then you still have the tag. Okay. I see. But is that a matter of Nibiru does nothing? Or like does Nibiru at least prevent something off of the board or 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 not? Nibiru forces an extender usually. Depends on the hand. Okay. Okay. Second effect failure. Uh so it does something, but it's not like guaranteed because they can easily just have an extender and push through it. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so yeah, there's those. Uh, okay. For some back row removal, Cosmics and Feather Duster. This deck can struggle against back row decks, so that's more so why these are here. But this is also for Fire King, Banisher Field Spell. But it seems like even when I did that to them, it was still kind of tricky to break through their board. So once again, I, I deck, really recommend... I'll, I'll, say this, I'll, I'll say this right now. This deck will never break a Fire King board by a good player. Like, you either hand trap them and not, not, let, not let them make it, um, but I think siding cosmic against Fire King with this deck is trolling with this list especially. It's what it's what we talked about earlier. Like you you just have to full send it and hope that you can hand trap them. Like one cosmic, you're not no. It's it's not it's not gonna happen. Like uh, if you're if you're playing the deck like this with 15 hand traps in the main deck, if anything, you can side deck more hand traps against Fire King Snake Eyes, but you cannot sideboard breakers. Like it's just it's it's it's. It's not gonna happen. If you think this deck can break a a Fire King Snake Eye deck, uh, like full board in a deck where fifteen of its non-engine are hand traps, it's not. That's not. That's not happening. Breaking the board after the fact just it's just impossible. It seems like, or like they have so much follow up. For How do you block efficiently a Fire King deck with hand traps? Though it seems they can always bounce back. Well, it's just not true that they can always bounce back. Like they. The thing is. And the, the reason why it feels so bad is because it's essentially just a, a gamble. It's a mini game, right? Your Snake Eye deck opens five cards um, and then they see how many ways they have to play, right? They have maybe they have one normal summon Snake Eye Ash and the rest is non-engine. If you imperm that Snake Eye Ash, they pass, right? If you imperm that Snake Eye Ash and they have a Diabell Star, right? One extender, then you need a second hand trap and so on and so forth. It's just levels, right? If you have the same amount of hand traps as they have starters slash extenders then they pass turn right uh and that is it's it's something that the snake eye deck like that is also one big difference between something like a snake eye ash one card combo and a math mech circular one card combo because circular was like uh sent for cost and all that most one hand traps didn't even trade well against math mech but they do trade well into um into snake eye like literally all you have to do against snake eye is draw the same amount of hand traps, then they draw starters, and then they're probably going to pass turn, unless they play some super unconventional starter cards. Or uh, unconventional ways to play through hand traps, right? For the next turn, that you still might not win. Um, and then three evenly. Um, 
a lot of people would scoop game one. This is also something I do not like. I dislike siding evenly when it's 15 hand traps in the main deck. Like, uh, evenly is a fine card. Maybe even in the next format. Maybe even fine against uh, Snake Eye decks if you build your deck accordingly. Uh, but I don't think this is a cohesive strategy in the sense that, like, if, 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 you, tr if you hand trap your opponent's Snake Eye deck and then they pass, your evenly banishes nothing. Uh, and... It's yeah, it's it's not it's not cohesive. Like, and if if evenly is your only non-engine into Fire King Snake Eye, that's also not gonna work because the deck isn't that weak to it. If I if I won uh going if I went first in full combo, they just scoop. Evenly so isn't for Snake Eye. Is okay, even if it's not against Snake Eye though, the same applies usually to other decks. Like it's like certain cards are just not that good if you play hand traps in your deck. Like cards like Dark Ruler. Evenly, Droplet, Lava Golem, Sphere Mode, those kind of heavy board breakers, uh, you want your opponent to actually commit cards to the board, right? Like, it doesn't make sense to play a card like Evenly that takes a lot of cards away from your opponent's board and then play other cards in your deck to stop them from playing and putting cards onto the field, right? Um, so, I, I like it more when you're playing a deck that plays more into this sort of, like, I'm going to let my opponent do their thing, right? And then I'm going to go ahead and evenly them rather than I play 15 hand traps in the main deck and then I also side deck evenly. No matter which matchup you're talking. The same is true against Voiceless Voice, for example. Like against Voiceless Voice, if you want to side deck evenly, you can. You just need to pair it up with other board breakers to force the Omni Negate and then you can evenly them. That might work. That might work out for you. But not... Um, like, if you hand trap Voiceless Voice, there's two options. Either they can still play and put up an Omni Gate for your evenly, or uh, they can't play and then they don't have anything for you to evenly. So, yeah. Isn't something like Lab an exception? What do you mean an exception? Like, what, what, what's like, in, in, which, in which case? Like, uh, I don't know exactly where Lab would be an exception. Evenly? Like, evenly against Lab or evenly in Lab? Like, what do you mean? Hand traps don't stop them from setting back row. Well, okay, in that case, yeah, there's always there's always exceptions to the rule. If you're playing against against a deck that consistently sets five cards, um, then yeah. But then in that case, you would probably side out your hand traps, right? You would probably you wouldn't you wouldn't uh, keep uh, your effect veilers against a deck that sets five cards, right? Like that's a different story. Um, or your draw the lockbird or your Nibiru and all that kind of stuff, right? You wouldn't be you wouldn't be using those cards in the first place, right? And so it's all about it's all about um, analyzing is a card good in the format, but also is a card good in the strategy that I'm trying to imply uh, for a certain matchup. Like if if my plan against Labyrinth involves siding out all my hand traps and siding in evenly, that might, that might be okay, right? So you always have to ask. It's not only about is this card good in this format, but also what does this card do in my specific deck? What do I want my deck to do? Right. Game two, I had no idea what people were playing, and I would just kind of side more so for Fire King. And like I said, board breakers aren't as good as hand traps versus the Fire King deck, so I wouldn't side these in. And then okay. game two, um, it would be like a different deck than I expected, like Voiceless or something. And I was like, ah, eh, maybe I, <laughs> it would have been better if I had these. So there's a situation like that. Um, I think I won three die rolls, which for me is usually more than often. I only win like one or two. So winning three, it was nice. Those games going first. But like I said, they'd usually scoop game one. We'd go to game two and I have no idea what they're playing and just do the best I could. But other than that, the side deck is more or less just there. It's not too important. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think we should put much as much emphasis on the side deck construction here. Cause I, like they were already saying, I think the main deck was more important than the side deck for them. Um, I don't want to go through. I don't want to go through the exact combo lines for this deck. I understand what it does. Uh, it probably gets to that sort of end board with like a couple towers and an Omni Negate trap and the rank up spell um, with multiple different ways. We don't have to learn all the lines. We don't have to look at it in that much detail. I understand what it's trying to do. Um, it looks like. A solid deck, I will say. Like, the concept behind it was sound. They were able to fit, I believe it was 40 cards, 15 hand traps, 
looked like sufficient starter cards to me some amount of engine requirements which wasn't great like there's like what four or five cards that aren't that don't seem great but you need to play them apparently like the trap card the two rank up magics some of the one of rate raptors oh it was 44 cards even okay um but yeah uh, slightly worse than but okay uh we have a couple of one of engine requirements that i'm sure are not ideal to draw otherwise we'd be playing multiple copies um the concept is fine but i the, the thing is i think this just goes into a long line of fine quote-unquote rogue-ish decks right whether you call this low tier two or high tier three or whatever uh like or mid mid tier three i don't know what the exact placement for is it for it is going to be um i think it's a rogue deck but it's fine for that but i don't see like from in terms of like we've re i haven't practiced the lines but i've we've read all the cards that they've been playing um i have a hard time imagining this archetype being ever being able to break through this sort of thing because there's just a lot of decks that do this sort of thing right there's a there's a good amount of decks that 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 are this deck right like bunch of combo pieces bunch of hand traps you go right that's a lot of um that's a lot of decks in the game um beating nibiru is an interesting um quality let's say that not so many decks have um i believe it also seems good against droll because it like it um specials from the deck a lot and sets directly from the deck right like it seems good against droll i, di I didn't pay attention how many searchers there were there were some there were some it wasn't zero searches like roost was a searcher one of the the fuzzy is a searcher like there's there's like a couple searchers but not all of them do like there's probably ways to 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 play after um four strix also adds right four strix also adds but i'm sure they have lines yeah i'm sure they have lines team only duels thank you for the prime Going second is nearly impossible for the deck. Oh yeah, Nifska, I saw you played. I saw you played the deck, yeah. I saw you pl you tried it. Um I didn't see how it went, but yeah. Um it seems like the kind of deck. And I think the problem with going second for this deck, even if you hand trap your opponent, is the fact that it's mostly two card combos, except for one or two exceptions. Uh and that usually doesn't perform well into interruption, right? Because like if I commit two cards to force out one interruption interruption because one card doesn't do it like i can't play with one card so i need to commit two to force an interruption like you're just not trading favorably at that point right but the yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so in some ways in some ways i would say it it looks good in other ways it just doesn't look better than other decks that we already have. So maybe it's a mad the, the way I would the way I would describe it at, at first impression is that if you really want to play Raid Raptor, right? Then now is maybe a good time for it. Because it seems playable to me, right? So if you want to play Raid Raptor, you can. But if you want to play competitively. Right. If you want to play the best deck possible, then I don't think Raid Raptor is that. I mean, obviously it's not the best deck, but even if even like alongside like tier two options, right? Like competitively, there's I don't see a great reason to play Raid Raptor other than if you like the deck, right? Um, which is good considering it's Raid Raptors out of all things. Yeah, like uh, uh, considering it's Raid Raptor out of all things, that's like a a good uh, a good place for it to be right it's cheap i mean maybe that's another yeah that could be an, i don't know the i don't know the exact the exact uh prices for raid raptor cards i can imagine something went up that is like 10 years old because now raid raptor got support no idea don't quote me on it but people in chat are saying it's budget right now so strangle lanius went up to 12 okay which one is strangle lanius 
Strangolanius has one printing from Phantom Rage and is, is a super rare that is now going for over 10 bucks. Yeah, true. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Is that the only uh, tribute, Lanius? Tribute. Hold up. Tribute, Lanius. Uh, goes from the past reprint. Ah, I mean, that's it's it's not cheap for for a reprinted card, but it's not the end of the world, right? It's like three, four bucks. So yeah, yeah, okay. I mean, but still. What would you say without without staples like uh, you know it doesn't play SP Little Knight and all that like entire deck for less than a hundred bucks? Yes, no. Ignoring thrust specifically in this list, I think so, right? Like there was a there was one thrust in this deck, but other than that, for max rarity raid raptor, I paid two hundred. What is what the hell does max rarity raid raptor mean? Like Sigurd Rare Force Tricks or something like that? Okay, yeah, yeah. If you go for those, it's a little bit more. Quarter century big guy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So like the the budget version of the deck, I'm pretty sure you can get for less than a hundred. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Not too bad. Not too bad. I mean, honestly. For the fact that you are still just comparing hand traps with your snake eye opponent if you're playing a 15 hand trap deck yourself. It's not too bad of a deal. I'll say it like that. I don't think it's that good. But if you're playing a pure snake eye matchup that has 15 hand traps as well, you're basically just comparing hands. But their hand, their deck costs like a thousand bucks and yours costs a hundred. So you're up on that end. You're up on that end. <laughs> okay, let me close all those Raid Raptor tabs that I have opened. It's a lot of tabs. Too many tabs, dude. Okay. Please react to my 10th place Light and Darkness Dragon Horus deck profile. Wait, why, why is there a Light and Darkness Dragon in your Horus deck? And is it 10th place at locals or 10th place at a big regional? Give me context before I give you an answer. Tenth place at 160 man regional. Okay, what's the verdict, chat? Do we look at Light and Darkness Dragon Horus from a 160 person regional? I feel like that's doable. Okay. Link me the sauce. Also, you get a light and darkness dragon bonus. You get a light and darkness dragon bonus. Because I don't think it's in the spreadsheet, is it? There's no 10th place from regionals that I see. Scrolling through it right now. I can't, I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. All right, tenth. Place, Light and Darkness, Horus Control. Okay, let me pause the music. There we go. Thank you for sending it. All right. There we go. Oh, I just realized you guys are not on screen anymore. Why did no one say anything throughout the entire stream? Beep, 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 beep. All right. Saved. On everybody, I am here with Mr. Steven Valiente. And you finish uh, 10th playing a very unique option in the fire meta. Uh, Dude, Valiente is such a sick last name. I want that. Before we jump into the list, uh, 
Any shout outs? Uh, shout outs to Alex, of my barber. Shout out to Pedro for lending me the Light and Darkness Dragons. Shout out to my boys, the Natty Crew. Shout out to All of Nowhere. Shout out to Solo Games. And uh, let's get this deck list going. All right, so what did you play? I played Light and Darkness Dragon, Horus Control. Okay, all right, let's jump right in. So I'm running two Light and Darkness Dragon. Four material Appaloosa, people don't read cards, win games. Yeah, this is an OG card, not a lot of new- <laughs> four, four material Appaloosa is funny. Also, yeah, 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 I mean, it's not wrong. <laughs> Almost. Players actually know what it is, so just a quick, give me a quick overview. What is Light and Darkness Dragon? Light and Darkness Dragon, like I said, is basically a four material Appaloosa, but for I anything, spells, traps, Light monster effects, dragon. and it's mandatory. So it negates mine as well, once per chain. Okay, so uh, Omni negate, but it has to respond directly to the card, yes. as well as it decreases the attack points by how much again? 500 attack and defense, so essentially it has to do it four times only, because it only has 2,400 defense. Okay. It's other effect kind of comes up, but uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. All right. So I'm not playing any hand traps. I'm not playing anything crazy. I'm just playing chicken bones, spear mode. <laughs> so three M Seti, two happy, best one, draw, target and attack protection. And I am playing the- Dude, Horus cards in general. I just want to say this because so far, um, people have only really been using them as engines in other decks, right? The Horus cards, I think, are pretty good in general. The only problem with the Horus cards is that, like, they all suck except, like, if you don't have Sarcophagus. Like, that's a that's an inherent design flaw. Like, Duamutev, Kibbe, Sinuef, and Hapi, and Horus, the Black Flame Deity. They all just big level 8 idiots that don't do anything if, if you don't get the, the ball rolling with your Sarcophagus, right? And so, like... But if you do get the stuff going, like, it's actually pretty cool. Also, you just said I'm not doing anything crazy, and then you said I play no hand traps, and I'm, I just play uh, sphere modes, but okay. We'll, we'll let that slide. We'll let that slide. One new one. Cards to pitch. Really good in the fire meta right now. I love these guys. M Seti pitch. Search. Stop Princess right away. And I'm playing the one brick for my Rainbow Bridge of Salvation. Is this level 8 for trade-in? Please tell me it's level 8 for trade-in. Well, I'm seeing trade-in. It is, right? This is Not level 8. Spells. 3 trade-in. I don't believe in Droll. Straight up, I don't believe in Droll. 3 what? Kings Arc. They do say- <laughs> Droll is not real. If you ignore a card just enough, it will, you'll never see it. Never saw it. I got Drolled one time all day today. Nice. 3 Horus Field Spell alongside with one Mausoleum. Oh, what? Mausoleum is a search target, like I said, off of... Off of Rainbow Bridge, which is how you get your Crystal Beast, your Crystal Beast Search, which is also a level eight, so it's a trade-in target as well. Okay. Wait. So what do you summon with? I mean, you summon Light and Darkness Dragon, obviously, but like, what if you don't draw Light and you only play two? Two talents. Call by and Terraforming. Please tell me the one time you got drolled, you used called by. Floodgate dot deck, baby. Three skill drain, three summon limit. There can only be one. Oh. The one card that people don't read, Canopic Protector. Oh man. Once per chain, res on whenever your opponent breathes. <laughs> they breathe, chain res, chain special from hand. It kind of helps unbrick a little bit, and if you go in set, you pitch it, it'll reset itself. Okay. So now the whole thing that I was saying about this is that if Lattice... Yeah, is a, yeah, you, are, you are a war criminal. Holy! Nah! Is on board, and you have... And you have King Sark alongside the worst monsters. Happening is that when that is destroyed, it has to blow up my entire board, and I have to special summon one monster in my graveyard. The thing is, Lad, Lad of destruction is checked by King Sark, causing all of them to be protected, even though King Sark is going simultaneously. Oh, right, because King Sark says they can't be destroyed unless they're targeted, right? So it only blows up the... Yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't blow up the monsters. Extra deck. 
Double SP, IP, Dark, Unicorn, Out My Towers, Zeus. I play this because this is how I make a, make a big Zeus. This effect is just basically to attach during the battle phase, attack three times into oh. monsters. 4k attack, pretty nice. Dingirsu, non-target send, spell. Well, this is a dual links extra deck right now. Extra deck rip, special summon, monster negate, let me draw three and burn you in time. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, that, that's coaching. <laughs> yes, sir. And uh, yeah, man, if I would do this again, hell no, yeah. You, you want to show us that peak of that side? The peak of the side? Nothing special. Wait, so how 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 do we search uh, light and darkness dragon? We don't, right? There's nothing like we just hope to draw it. We do not. Okay. My side deck. What you mean? It's a whole ensemble. <laughs> this is the guy the Salamangrade player earlier was talking about. We might be onto something. Is this? Did you by any chance like? Uh, is this the? There's no. Is this the same regional South Florida? Where was Salamangrate? Hold up. <laughs> Where was Salamangrate? No, that was Texas. No, it's not the one. Uh, three draw. Never came in. I never cited this card in. I'm probably gonna. I mean, yeah, you, you don't believe it's real, so why would you cite it? It's crazy. You only have 12 cards in your side deck. I'm gonna play Mistake and Arrest over this. Two Lava Golem, never Lava Golem, my fire opponents. I played almost all fire today. This is a card won me a match in game one the Wicked Avatar. Wicked Avatar, nobody really knows what this card does. Eh? Won me a match in game one. This card won me a game, a match in game one, and it's a card in your side deck. The Wicked Avatar. Wicked Avatar, nobody really knows what this card does. It loses to an Imperm, but if you tribute summon three monsters to bring it out, you can activate its effects, and your opponent cannot activate spells or traps for two turns, and it lingers. So even if they out it, it's fine. It's still Cold Wave, yeah. Yeah, and it's a Moon Mirror Shield on a stick. Oh, they meant round one. I see. Okay. It always has 100 more than the highest attack. Woo! Uh, triple Soul Release, Cosmic, and Evil League. Pretty simple. Oh. Dude. This is wild, man. Why is there, like, 10, 10 floodgates in your deck, man? Holy! Nothing crazy. Yeah. Floodgate.de I mean, hey, the deck, the deck is cool. Besides the floodgates, um, the the light and darkness dragon, rainbow bridge, Keldo Modora kind of stuff. I I kind of dig that. The sphere mode, lava golem, board breaker approach. I like. Uh, I don't even know if the floodgates are ideal for the deck. I don't even know if it if that's like if that helps your win rate because. Yeah, I don't know. Why not play Vanity's Ruler? I mean, it's 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 way easier to out Vanity's Ruler than Light and Darkness Dragon, right? Because Light and Darkness Dragon can't get impermed. Like it, you imperm it, it it negates imperm, right? So I don't know. Yeah, I'm a, <laughs> I'm just at a loss for words, dude. Okay. Uh, ba, 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 ba. What do we have? Wait, Centurion still exists? Actually, I'm not too surprised Centurion still exists. My theory, Centurion probably is just the same as it's always been. Just play all the hand traps and do the same thing that we were talking about with the... Um, with the Raid Raptor deck, just compare hand traps against your Snake Eye opponents and see if you come out ahead, you know? Can someone link the spreadsheet? All you need to do is exclamation mark spreadsheet and you can, you can click the link. There's a command for it um, in chat. Register, thank you for the two months. Appreciate you so much. Albas, Chris X, thank you for the Prime as well. Thank you so much.
Why is Centurion so expensive still? Is it? I would actually be surprised if it was, but maybe you're right. I mean, um, hold up. Centurion. Well, which one was the most expensive one? Emblema Oath. Emblema Oath is... Nah. I mean, if you add everything together, it's probably still going to be, like, not cheap. But it's like... What was this when it came out? Like, 30? Dude, I lost so much. I picked up the entire core. Uh, Trudea. Trudea is 15. Primera. 15, like 18. Yeah, it's much more reasonable now. Like. Why did you buy this? I mean, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a bad deck. Uh, it's just not better than the rest right now. Alright, Mortal here, you know, Denny. Hey, Mortal, uh, you look kind of different. <laughs> That's true. Alright, what'd you play? I played a really deck that does something super unfair. Okay. So, I played Centurion, and like a big reason I played it was just because nobody knows what these cards do. True. So going into games like two and three people would side and Droll and Nib, and like this deck just plays through that, or, or it just, you search once, like it really doesn't matter. And you, you leave on four summons. It, but it loses the Cosmic Cycle, so that's better, how you know it's a bad deck. You know, better, better have that's like the, that's the worst part about this deck right now probably is that Cosmic Cyclone is a thing that almost everyone is going to be playing. So that's a, that's a problem. Better have it. Yeah. All right, so here it is. Uh, Centurion, you just make uh, some little twelves. Uh, I like it a lot because I, I, I'm just kind of helmet like that. I just want <laughs> to play 13 one card starters and that's like my entire combo. Uh, I honestly don't really like Phalanx that much. I like the counter trap a lot more. I'm citing it. Um, Would you make a switch on those? You, it, it's, you're, you're never going to main a counter trap in case you lose a die roll. And saying. this one is at least playable going second because if you discard it somehow, then you can still bring back your Legatia and it's a pop when Chum. it comes back. Chum. So that's the Centurion stuff. Shout out to Gurren Lagan. And then, so it works really well mm. with level eight. And this is the, the best level eight package. This would be such a good engine for this deck. If it wasn't so, if it wasn't so much of a gamble on where you get stopped, you know, like if you normal summon Primera, if you normal summon Primera, that's a tuner. So you want to have a level eight non-tuner extender. If you get stopped on Trudea, which is a non-tuner, a level 8 non-tuner extender doesn't do shit for you. So that's that's a big problem, I think, for Centurion. The fact that they don't you don't know be before you start playing or when you build your deck, you don't know which extender you need. You don't know, do I need a non-tuner extender because I got stopped on Primera or do I need a tuner extender because I got stopped on uh, Trudea, which is a big issue. I could think of because it's super unfair. Honestly, I didn't. I didn't even summon these most of the time. I would just use him set uh, him uh, draw. Like just getting to a draw like breaks it. Because you, you. Let me introduce you to Upstart Goblin. You go full combo, and then you're just trying to draw cards in case they stop your main combo, so that you just have like like tech cards to try to stop your opponent. So with that. Super Volley. Ooh. So, mm. this is, what, 18? Non-Engine. Um, Desires was a last-minute addition. Um, before... Dude, three Desires with one Emmet is, cr is crazy. That is, that is, that's crazy. Uh, the last core set before Bonfire came out. Uh, Fenrir was, like, super good in this because it gives you a discard. It just keeps recurring resources. But it, it, it you play in the nib with it, you play in the droll with it. So, pot, calling like, desires really non-engine like, doesn't sit right with me. Yeah, you're right. That's a weird place to put it. It's such a it's such a modern way of thinking about it, though. Like everyone, everyone just looks at it like, okay, my deck is engine and non-engine, right? This is engine. This is non-engine. When like in reality, not every card falls into those categories, right? Like desires can be both, talents can be both, because you can draw into more engine with it. Uh, like there's so many cards that can be used in like different ways but i i yeah i mean 
it's just a very modernized way of thinking about cards that way, right? They, they, what, I guess what they're trying to say is like, okay, after after counting all the Centurion cards and adding in the Horus cards, this is the amount of flex spots I had, I guess, is like a better way to phrase it. Last play going first. Right. Or if they just stopped everything. It'd be better Super if you called it flex spots, right? If, if, it was, if that was the definition. If like, okay, these cards are what you have to play. You don't really get to ch change, change these around. Like if you want to play Horus Centurion, these are your... Uh, these are your quote-unquote cards that always go in, and then this this is what I decided to do with my flex spots, right? Um, but yeah, I, I get what you mean. At the same time, it's just it's just a label. It doesn't really mean anything. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of only activated it like twice, and it didn't really stop anybody like at all. The only thing it was good for is I uh, was able to just OTK by summoning a mud dragon because I super polyed my own stuff. <laughs> and uh so that's the main deck even 40 40 okay uh this approach by the way is what we've talked i don't want to repeat it too much but we've talked about this today a lot and i think it's going to be very relevant moving forward in this format i don't like the approach of doing nine hand traps and then pair it with six board breakers right like because you I don't know, if you try to imperm your Snake Eye opponent, you don't have something to super poly into and vice versa, right? It's, it's not... I don't think splitting it like this is ideal. It's not bad, necessarily. I just don't think it's the, it gives you the best chances of winning. It'd be better if it was like imperm Ash, Valor, uh, Nibiru or something like that, right? Like stop Snake Eye from playing uh, and then just do your own thing, right? Kind of only activated like twice. Um... <laughs> I the extra deck should be once, relatively so straightforward, against, right? Uh, Snake Eye Fire King, and he, Snake Eye Fire King just like has like a bunch of chains that happen for a little while, like with, especially when they're on the crackback, and uh, everyone knows Calamity can just die. Dude, I I wish, I I want two things to happen so badly. I want Calamity to be banned, and I want them to make really good Centurion support, even past what what's already been announced, um, that makes the deck powerful without needing a cringe win condition like Calamity. Because Centurion cards are actually, I think they're super fun. The only thing that's cringe about them is the win condition. Like, the, the Centurion deck is really cool because it's got this really unique grind game where, like, your stuff goes back into your spell and trap zone and hops out on your opponent's turn. Like, I, I like it a lot. It's just that the freaking Calamity win con is cringe as hell. But, like... I don't know. I don't think I ever lost a game result after resolving Calamity. I really like the, the rank 8 pool. I was playing a lot more, but I cut it down for the super poly targets. This ended up getting... It, it was really clutch. It was clutch against Sneak Eye. It was clutch against Kashtira. It was clutch against Salaman Grey. Um, just stops both players from summoning from the graveyard. Uh, Non-targeting, non-destruction removal is amazing. Um, Zeus is Zeus, what can I say? That's true. Links never went into any of these, like at all. Oh, jeez. Like at all. Um, I, expect I expect you to just synchro a bunch of times, but that's usually it, right? Right, right. And, and like you, uh, with uh, with SP, you don't have a lot of times where you're trying to link away an extra deck monster. So you don't actually get her on summon banish that often. That's right. Uh, so never summoned that at all. Never made this. otk with this. Made this against Salmon Great and still lost. Ouch. Hey, I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> right. uh, dude, actually, they lost to the Salamang Great, dude. Hold, this is the same regional. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, they got beat Bison on the Horus cards. No, they lost the beat Bison. Oh, I can't take... Oh, no, I can't take it seriously anymore. Oh, no. Oh, no, yeah, they yeah. lost the beat I Bison. This, oh, no. I don't know, you can switch it back. Bell isn't even here for Fire King or Snake Eye, really. And I just no. Um, oh. Duster and Link Search it going second. Okay. Never used either of these. I kind of wanted to play evenly and play Thrust at two, but I don't know. I just decided against it last minute. Okay. Cosmic, because again, I hate Labyrinth. I, I don't think I ever use these at all. And uh, this is this is entirely well, Cosmic like this. And, and okay, common misconception: Cosmic Cyclone is not even good against Labyrinth right now. The current iteration of Labyrinth, everything is chainable pretty much. Like ninety percent of the trap cards are chainable. Uh, and like Cosmic Cyclone does nothing. Card is good in other matchups, but for 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 Labyrinth, I don't even think you cited unless you're scared of like floodgates. And summon limits should probably be limited just like the other floodgates. Uh, I'm with you. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair because so draw phase, you'll flip anti spell, right. and they'll have the singular cosmic that they're waiting to use on your uh, on your actual Centurion monsters, but then they have to do it on anti spell, so right. then they get calamity locked anyway. Friend of mine plays Red Dragon Archfiend and doesn't understand why they wouldn't just ban Crimson Dragon instead of Calamity because Calamity is a valid strategy to Red Dragon Archfiend, whereas Centurion just abuses Crimson Dragon for it. Uh, it's a reasonable take. 
um there's two sides to this argument the one side is just ban the generically accessible card that brings out the other card which is crimson dragon which enables it right uh the other side of the argument is crimson dragon by itself like king king calamity is cringe card design because that win condition shouldn't exist in general right um i personally don't care which of the two they would hit i think uh crimson dragon is problematic design because it is so generic and it can summon out so many different things right it's a problematic card design too um i personally yeah, I, I I see the arguments for both, honestly. I just think uh I, I think they can do whatever they want, just make sure not both are together in the same format, I think. Yeah. But I see where they're coming That's from. Right. Anything yeah. else for you? No, just uh shout out Danny. I heard you got first and he's behind the camera. Oh uh, yes. <laughs> Alright, so that was Centurion. I mean, long story short, really. Long story short, with with a lot of these different deck profiles that we're we've been doing right now. Um the fire decks are super, super dominant and probably getting close to tier zero numbers in the first two weeks already. However, I do think that a lot of different concepts can still work in this upcoming format, which I think is going to be a relief for some people, especially when it comes to like the budget aspect of the fire decks, because that I think is by far the biggest negative about the about the deck is that it is so freaking expensive so while the deck is the best deck undoubtedly no questions asked fire deck fire decks are going to be the best decks for the upcoming format um they are not as dominant and oppressive in terms of the the the, the gameplay itself as something like ishizu tier limit was for example um like ishizu tier limit there wasn't really a way i guess there was like if you wanted to play a rogue deck during ishizu tier format you had to like slap nine bestials into it or 12 bestials whichever and hope that that would get you there right but for the most part during ishizu tier format even that wouldn't get you there right um right now a, a genuine strategy seems to be just play any deck that can play through one hand trap reasonably well, pair it with like 12 to 15 hand traps yourself, try to stop the snake eye deck in its tracks because that is possible, and then you're good to go. At which point you're just comparing opening hands essentially with like, do you have more hand traps than I do? Do I have, do I have enough hand traps to stop your first turn? Question mark, right? Um, I don't think this sort of... Uh, this sort of environment is that great but at the same time it does leave some room for not having to play the fire deck you know but uh nivska thank you for the full year appreciate you thank you so much yeah i don't know i don't know what to what to really think of this entire thing because on the one hand on the one hand, I really like um, the interactivity that I've seen from some Snake Eye matchups, right? Like when when the Snake Eye decks actually, when both players get to play, I actually have been enjoying it a lot. Also on the UDS stream and all that, like the the level of play, the level of depth from the fire decks has been has been really cool to look at. But on a, the other, the one thing that I don't like is that it's kind of turning into this just we're chucking hand traps at each other until someone is dead and can't move anymore pretty much i don't find that that portion super fun someone earlier said that uh daniel hartman's profile is really interesting which i think i always like the uh, daniel's reasoning behind uh different uh, things in the deck and it's only six minutes so i, I want to check it out i think this is a Pure Snake Eye Hand Trap deck with Magician Soul. So kind of similar to what Juan Andrade was playing at the UDS and made it to the second place. Hello guys, this is Raiden Trade and we're here with Daniel Hartmann. He got first place at the Dokken Regiment today with 150 players. Thank you. Yeah, I almost forgot that you asked for it earlier, but then I just saw it now on the on the thing and I was like, yeah, I wanted to check that out. So let's let's see the let's see it. 
guys. Hi guys, I am Nate Snake Eyes. But before I show the list, I want to do shoutouts. Um, shoutouts to to Maxi, obviously, for supporting and driving and yeah, being a good guy. Uh, shoutouts to Julian and uh, Nikita. Uh, and special shoutouts to Team Raiden Trade, especially Zio, Ben, and uh, Nico for helping me out with, with theory and yeah i think with i met him there he laughed at my deck <laughs> i mean you played raid raptors so at the end of the day you know that's the you you're you're kind of asking for it no sometimes dive right in so as i said i played pure snake eye because uh, it has more room for non-engine and it doesn't lose to to draw so for the non-engine i played one kuikara because you will search going first or go second if you need it and uh... just to clarify i don't think fire king snake eye loses to droll um but i also don't think that's what he means by that like it's more like when the the snake eye cards themselves don't do much under droll right the deck still functions the the deck still functions under droll and lockbird the fire king version of the deck but the those what is it like between seven eight nine cards in your deck right like these these eight or nine eight or nine cards in your deck that you play um they don't provide anything under droll right and so when droll and lockbird is very popular on average that engine generates less value for you right that's um I think what we're trying to hint at here like you get more value from other tech cards because at this point like the 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 pure snake eye deck and the fire king snake eye deck are still relatively similar in their play patterns it's just that they both do a slightly different variation towards the end of the combo like essentially the fire king uh the fire king cards are just like a an accessible um like engine piece that is larger than the Jet Synchron package, but therefore like blocks out other non-engine. And what he's saying is you get more value from non-engine when Droll is popular, popular because uh, the the Fire King decks are uh, Fire King cards are not like able to unfold their potential, which is uh, true. If they don't kill you, you can break every board with Kuikara and Forlorn. Uh, I played Talents and I played a lot of hand traps. I figured in in in. Against fire decks, it doesn't matter if you if you Vela or Impem, one of the starters, it doesn't matter what extender they have, they can't go for Synchro plays in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the pure Snake Amber match. And the this is true. I, I have encountered this with, uh, with Vela or Impem in the Snake Eye deck, or against the Snake Eye deck. Even if you have Diabell Star, even if you have Kirin to pop your ash, whatever you 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 name it, right? Because that first snake eye ash got negated, that snake eye ash can't get you flamberge out of the deck, right? So you have to go some convoluted lines um in order to get your snake eye cards out of the deck. Um so you even if you can resolve Poplar later and you get original sinful spoil, you can't use that original sinful spoil to summon jet synchron. Because you usually want to summon Oak to get to Flamberge. However, I'm not sure if this is entirely true. I think you need we need to study those lines at some point. Um, because I'm sure there are some lines where your Ash gets Veilard or Impermed. You have an extender and you can just make Promethean Princess to bring back the Ash and then tag out with that. Theoretically possible. Um, but it depends. Yeah, it depends a little bit. But normally, veiling your ash or imperming your ash means that you have to go for an oak off of the sinful spoils, even if you can get it. That stops jet synchron. The non synchron bot is beatable, I think, with engine only. So I played three okay. souls. I played three souls because uh, I felt like I needed something to push through hand traps effectively. And also going second, it's a great card because, because you have access to, to field spell and populus and they all go into spell and trap zone and then you get draws for free. Also, Ash plus this is a uh, full combo with, with the Synchro monsters. Uh, and yeah, I value that a lot. Souls is an interesting card to me. The the card seems the card seems seems cool. Um 
I'm not sure how how much of a fan of it I am as a three of especially, but like I can see it. I can see it some at some yeah yeah. Um, he won't call by the grave to have hand drops and for the engine cards. Uh, three bonfire, flamberge, three ashes, one oak. I played feed spell. I, I like the feed spell a lot. It helps breaking bonds because everyone is, is summoning in your turn, and if they do, then you yeah, the feed get an extender great. for free. Uh, the jetsun corn. And, and yeah, well, we want the package. There's nothing to say about uh three witch should be standard honestly uh two poplar i i like three in pure snake eye the other stuff i agree on well this i think the engine is pretty standard and yeah the lists all just differ in the normal engine i think mostly true yeah. so for the extra deck it's it's 15 dif 15 different cards it was a pain to write the deck list one of this. Uh, maybe you can cut this. Uh, nah. Not sure though. Nah. We'll need to test a bit more. Nah. And, uh, yeah. Denied. Denied. For the OT case. Denied. Um, for an access code. I like access code a lot because it doesn't it doesn't use your battle phase. And even though it's kind of counterintuitive to use access code just to out like one phase down, it's really efficient because uh, with the Chalmers and Selene, uh, two monsters go into access code and on the way to access code you you plus because in the mirror you use his his monsters in the graveyard like ash Oak that's true or like if you if and, you have a fake yeah. mailer or diabelstar in the graveyard like being able to turn a link two into forcing interruption with access code is not too not too bad yeah so it's it's actually really free access code charma selena really good package i think i played the uh, even though i'm going for the swim to combo if i can I think you need the upper loser for IP and to 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 facilitate hands where you have a lot of extenders but don't get access to Jets and Corn. I mean, Appaloosa is really important to playing around Nib too. I think in some lines, uh, my biggest problem, unironically, my biggest problem with the Synchro version was the fact that because everyone is playing so many hand traps. I got hand trapped a lot and I wasn't able to get to Jet Synchron. I was still making boards a lot of the times, but I wasn't getting to Jet Synchron. So I wasn't using my synchros very often. Um, and I was missing some extra deck utility because the, the, deck ha the deck just has less extra deck space than the Fire King version because of those synchros, right? Because of those three that go together, uh, you just don't have a way to really fit all of the really cool cards because there's so many cards that are good in this extra deck like i'm assuming we're not going to be able to play like nightmare phoenix for example nightmare phoenix is a great card in this deck because of how easy it is to co-link it with like promethean princess or sunlight wolf or even link karibo right it's super easy to go phoenix get the free draw going uh and force out back row like it's a phenomenal card but it's just so hard to 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 fit uh, alongside you know the the deck that needs so many utility spots and the three synchros so on low key i've been thinking if everyone is playing so many hand traps maybe even in pure snake eye you just don't play uh jet synchron just 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 call it a day just go for snake eye vanilla combos and back it up with non-engine and, and call it a day i don't know if it's good enough but if everyone is on 15 hand traps and you never get to go to jet synchron anyways then i i think that would be possible so you can, uh, can and and people in the OCG have doing have been doing something like that as well. I saw lists that were only link monsters in in the OCG. I saw some, so it's not like it's not like unheard of. It's not crazy. I don't think I'm crazy by saying you can cut Jet Synchron. Actually, use the extenders you have to. Put have you been messing around with Runic Snake Eye anymore? We'll do we'll do that tomorrow. I'm I'm gonna mess you guys up with Runic Snake Eye tomorrow because we're doing a remote duel with viewers tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna mess you guys up. You, I, I'm not gonna. No, no battle phase will be had tomorrow. Got more interruption than SPIP. These cards are absurd. And one princess and Rage of Phoenix and Link Rebel. If we're lucky, <laughs> if we're lucky with Runic Snake Eye tomorrow in like a five-hour stream, we can maybe even finish a match. Maybe. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Let's go to the side deck. I decided to play back, uh, some kind of back removal against decks like Rescue Ace. 
and um, cosmic cyclones. I like them in the in the fire in the fire matchups because after one hand trap there are no omni negates, so against pure you can cosmic the the IP. And uh, yeah, uh, a nice card for the for the fire decks as well is this card uh, match interesting. Spring because this card is very interesting. I have two problems with this card. Um, so for for those of you that don't know, it says. Uh, draw cards equal to the amount of face-up spell and traps your opponent has, and then discard cards equal to the number of the face-up spell and traps that you have, which uh, is always going to be at least one, because it counts itself, right? Like, let's say your opponent has a field spell, uh, an IP Mascarena, and the Fire King Sanctuary, right? In that case, this card says draw three, discard one, which is very good. The problem with that, the, 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 the first problem I have with this card is that you cannot shotgun it. Because if you, I mean, you can, but if you do, your opponent can chain Flamberge to pull the IP out of the spell and trap zone, and then it's not considered a face up spell and trap anymore. So you would only draw two in this case. Uh, I mean, draw two, discard one is still good, but nah. Um, so you have to wait for your opponent to use the Flamberge, right? Which most people will do it immediately, and then you can chain this, but not always, right? Not always does this. Not, not always do people do that, right? The other thing that I have, the other problem that I have with this card is that it falls into a similar category of other cards that we've talked about before. I don't think this card is great when you play hand traps because you are going to stop your opponent from doing stuff right it is a quick play spell yes it's a quick play spell uh actually because the the camera quality isn't that great i can pull it up for you magical spring Yu-Gi-Oh. it's an interesting card that i think has its merit uh and maybe has uses i just don't know if i agree with putting it into a hand trap snake eye deck isn't shared right just better? No, this one's for going second. This one is going second. Draw a number of cards equal to the number of face-up spell and trap cards your opponent controls, then discard a number of cards equal to the number of face-up spell and trap cards you control. So essentially, you just use it after your opponent goes first. No matter which version of Snake Eye they're playing, they usually have a field spell, either Island or um, Temple, right? So they have one. They have a card in the spell and trap zone from. Um, Flamberge, right? Then they might have a continuous spell if they're playing like um if they're playing uh Fire King, they might have Fire King Sanctuary, right? And so in that case, you could be drawing like three cards, this card one, which is a that's a crazy strong effect, right? Like draw three cards, this card one is insane. Uh in and helps you play play going second so much, right? So, so this card is this card is pretty interesting, I think. Uh, especially though, if you're playing a board breaker deck, because if you're playing a hand trap deck, I have two big problems. First thing, there's a chance that you're stopping your opponent from even setting up spells and traps. Like for example, if you imperm your opponent's Snake Eye Ash, and they get they don't even get to Poplar, then maybe there's not going to be anything in the spell and trap zone. Maybe they don't have a field spell, whatever, right? And so the, you risk the card being completely dead. The second thing is the cards you're going to draw with it are also significantly less powerful if you draw into Effect Mailers, Nibiru's, Drollin Lockbird, Ash Blossom, whichever, right? Like, if I use this card going second, I want my opponent to go all in, set up like three face-up cards. I want to draw three, and I want to draw like, you know, enemy, cosmic, talents, uh, all that, right? That's what I want to draw. That's what I want to draw. Could Shared Right not be better? Shared Right, I don't know why... Look, the, the Shared Right and this card have one thing in common, and that is that they're a quick play spell that has the word draw on it. Other than that, in terms of what they do in the matchup, they are completely different cards. I don't know how they are even close to comparable. I don't know why we are comparing those two cards right now. Like, is it because they both draw a card? Like, no. The, they, are not, they are not remotely close to doing the same thing. Post side, you have Cosmic, Talents, and, and Imperm. 
I think the idea is that if you play versus any Snake Eye board, you break it if you have access to all your engine extender. At least that's how I understand it. Um, I mean, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but I, I, I don't think that like just engine versus engine. If you let them set up uh, like Promethean Princess in the Graveyard, let's say Amblo Whale, IP Masquerina, Flamberge, I think just with Engine, you're not getting through. You still need help. And after one hand up, they don't have any Omni yet, so you just activate this draw three, draw three, discard one. Uh, it fixes your hand. Even if you don't draw non Engine with it, a good Engine hand can still beat uh, the, the, the Mirror Match, I think. You see, I don't think that's true. Because uh, a good engine hand, if you're playing pure Snake Eye, doesn't have that many pushes, is what you need to realize. Like, you have Ash, Normal Summon, Diabell Star, um, Bonfire for Poplar, maybe. Um, and that's it. Right? Magician Souls... Arguable. Okay? Maybe Magician Souls. But that's not that crazy right and i don't think those four pushes wanted i mean wanted is basically diabell star like, come on like i i don't think that's get that gets there right like I don't, I don't think i don't think you you have i don't think you have what you need right if all you're drawing is your engine right you need like throw in throw in a an enemy controller or a soul release or a monster reborn, or whatever, now we're talking. Now we're talking, right? If you go, or other example, you go magical spring, draw three, discard a spell card, activate, engage, now we're talking, right? But you need to build your deck to be able to do that, right? Like that is something you can explore. Maybe that version works. I don't think pure engine breaks the snake eye board i don't think it does that i think because even if you count like one ash one uh one bonfire one diabell star and ma let let there be a magician souls right you're not breaking promethean mascarena um flamberge plus one hand trap maybe right which is you you always have to expect that there's also one hand trap right and so like I don't think I don't think it's quite good enough. It, unless your opponents are completely new to the deck and they misuse some of their interruptions. Then yeah, maybe. And maybe this is what you capitalize on with a card like this at this time. But like for a couple weeks from now on, when people get somewhat used to on when to use their interruptions and stuff like that, I don't think um that sort of theory holds true. I just don't think you have enough pushes. Because it's all once per turn, right? You got one normal summon of Ash, one time Poplar extension, one time Diabell Star extension, and then you're running very thin on what you can do. And that's where you need non-engine to do more on a single turn, right? That's where you need extra abilities to like you need like you'd need like an enemy to dodge an imperm as well and take one of their things, or like a talents to take something, or those kind of things. That's what you would need in that case. So yeah. The car, I, I use I activated it a couple of times. It was always game on the spot. This card should also play into draw a decent amount of the time. I mean, yeah, this card is terrible in a draw format because, like I said, you can't shotgun it unless your opponent shots gun shotguns the uh, flambers in the draw phase, which they shouldn't, right? Um, but I think uh, the card is good. It's just you need you need more than just that, right? You need you need the card to be good in the approach that, that you're building your deck, right? Like, you need... Uh, your game plan needs to be according to, to this, right? And so I'm not sure if that sort of strategy is viable. But in, like, a deck, like, if you, if you play no hand traps and you go, like, enemy controller, magical spring, triple tactics talents, cosmic cyclone, uh, all that, soul release, right? That I can see happening, right? Hey, if I'm drawing full engine, magical spring, draw three, discard one, and I have a soul release, nah, we're cooking. Like, that can work, right? That can work. The problem is you can't main deck any of these cards. So at that point, like, is it really worth it to throw, like, 10 cards into your side deck to change your game plan completely against Snake Eyes? I don't know. I played three Ghost Bell. 
When do you think you should activate Flamberge to bring out IP? Uh, I don't think you shotgun it because it could get impermed in theory. Like if if imperm is if imperm is the, if the is the sixth card, I don't think you have a reason to to shotgun the flamberge. Uh, you just wait until your opponent commits cards because what is the punish? I don't see it. Talents, you're playing into talents every time. Like talents is always live. So I don't really know. Yeah. I, it's pretty versatile, I like it against Labyrinth, Branded. Uh, the problem with not shotgunning Flambers is Cash Tira Fenrir. Mm, no. No, it's not. <laughs> what? Why is Fenrir a punish? Like, you can just use... Uh, you, you, even then, you can use Flambers, bring out IP. And then if they target anything with Flamberge, you can link it off with IP, like uh, chain IP. Or you just pop the Fenrir with anything you have. Like, it's not... Fenrir isn't even popular right now. That, it's like, nah, no, it's not. That's not the problem. Troll. Yeah, I, I, I was debating to main deck it, but I figured it's not good enough against Pure to main deck it in the fire matchups and also kind of lackluster. Uh, against other decks, so for regional, I wanted just a solid coverage against everything. And yeah, that's the profile. I think I lost two games in total. It was a, it's an interesting approach. There's a couple interesting cards here for sure. Like I like that is one thing I like, um, as opposed to the OCG deck lists that are super super streamlined. There is still innovation happening right now, and I'm very stoked to see it. You know, there's a lot of interesting cards. Uh, that are popping up that people are experimenting with i don't think we're done yet when it comes to the fire format like the fire format is not set in stone um and we are not done with our development as the tcg and we're already seeing this and i'm very curious to 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 see for example what pack what pack came up with for the 3v3 ycs what they played because uh, Pac, uh, Pac's, Pac told me some, some interesting things about the list. Uh, he, didn't, he didn't tell me what's in it, but he said like there's some very interesting lines on how to play through hand traps and all that kind of stuff, right? And that, um, that I'm looking very much forward to. Um, the 3v3 YCS in Vegas is going to be uh, incredibly interesting to, be, to look at. Unfortunately, I can't live stream it. I can't watch party the YCS together this weekend because I'm going to be casting the Master Duel Invitational. But we're definitely going to take a look at all of it um, on, on Monday and Tuesday next week. Like, we're definitely going to go on a deep dive and see how the format is developing. So, it's, um, it's definitely going to be something. Have we looked at the UDS top four lists yet? Uh, we've talked about it with Pac on the podcast. I think that's enough. Um, yeah. Anyways, guys, I need to get going. I need to get going. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's stream. I'm going to send you guys over. Why don't I send you guys over to Syriax? I haven't rated Syriax uh, ever yet. So, you guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed the stream today. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, no Master Duel gameplay. It just felt like uh, we didn't finish the, the thing. I wanted to talk about these things. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Thank you so much. Wait, Emrys streaming? Hold up. Hold up. Is he? Emre. Oh, he is. Hell yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, Syriax. I'm sending you guys to Emre. <laughs> All right. You guys, uh, I'll, I'll send you over to the literal Master Duel World Champion. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the stream. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you guys are back tomorrow. When we do some remote dueling, put what we have talked about today into practice. And uh, yeah, hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and see you guys tomorrow. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. Thank you for all the follows, all the subs. Appreciate you guys for being here and have a great rest of your day. Bye bye. Peace.